So hey guys, welcome to our channel fiction domain. And also welcome to the another amazing story on what if Naruto was manipulate the power of earth and water. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Do you understand your mission Naruto? The imposingly tall figure asked with a blood red haired youth standing before him with royal purple eyes getting a nod. I'm being reincarnated to assist the possible millionth reincarnation of the person who took my role after I defeated Madara and the Juubi. I won't have my chakra, nor my Rinnegan, chakra chains, or any of my jutsu to fall back on, but my bending which due to humanity losing the use of chakra after my departure, have evolved into using an element called Kai, Naruto surmised getting a nod from the deity in front of him. It's been a couple hundred years since Naruto Uzumaki Namaka's Senju Uchiha has defeated Madara and the Juubi, with the assistance of Kurama and his brothers and sisters who merged with him. To prevent humanity from repeating the process of bloodshed and hate Naruto like his ancestor before him gave chakra. Naruto took it away with him as he vanished from the world with him leaving as the last Biju in existence. That is correct Sachi-kun. You are to help Korra in her quest to stop several threats from destroying the balance and Republic City the figure said, reducing in size becoming more curved and slender, as her long vibrant red hair became obvious with her pristine white obi and kimono. Okay I get that mom, but you never told me what kind of threat. Who is it or what is it I have to help her with? Naruto asked with curiosity as he stood in front of his mother who giggled into her hand. Well besides herself with her hot temper and going at something half-cocked. You are to help me fight against a man who is trying to bring an end to benders and a man who is trying to end the avatar cycle and bring about the dark spirit she said, getting a nod from him showing him several images. So when am I supposed to go? Today. Next week. He asked not liking the grin on her face. More like. Now she said noticing him fade from existence. What? Naruto said vanishing from existence as Kashina saw one last image of Naruto up in her realm with Korra, one other woman and his new mother. Good luck Sachi she said to the space her son once stood. Hold on Miss Beifrung I can see the head now a woman said in front of a screaming woman who had a vice grip on her husband's hand. Hey I a fuck you Shimura next time we have children you're carrying the little bastard for nine fucking months oh fuck. She roared in agony as her husband was frothing at the mouth, unable to say anything because her other hand was gripping his balls through his clothes getting a pop. He thought in excruciating pain there goes the left one gasping for breath, he said weakly I it's okay sweetie just a little more. Cutting him off she said gripping tighter fuck you, you waterbending asshole you did this to me, and if I weren't in such excruciating pain I'd shove a metal pole the size of my mom's statue up your ass and leave you there for all of Republic City to see. Alright Lin give me one more good strong push the nurse said guiding the woman while silently sympathizing with the agonizing husband, since this isn't the first or will it be the last time she'll hear threats like that towards the husband, especially from the mouths of earth bending women. Ay ay ay. She cried when a second softer cry was heard as the nurse clipped the umbilical cord, handing the bundle to her after she collapsed on the bed. Congratulations Lin, Shimura it's a beautiful baby boy she said, showing the sleeping boy with whisker marks and black hair with grey streaks. Look at him he's so beautiful isn't he Shimura? Lin said getting a nod from her husband brushing a hand through his own grey hair. But he is Lin. Though just from looking at him he's going to be a mirror image of you if you were boy or spirits forbid your mother he said with a shudder, Toph Beifrong was an intimidating woman who could make the most frightening figures seem tame in comparison when faced with her leg. What should we name him? He doesn't strike me as a stable person like Earthbender Shimura said, getting a nod from Lin, who could tell by looking at him, he wouldn't be like most Earthbenders. He'd possibly be a hectic unrelenting force like a whirlpool that's it. Shimura said in excitement. What? And please ease up on the yelling he's sleeping she said tiredly getting a nervous chuckle from the man as he heard the underlying threat. The name Whirlpool or Naruto how what do you think? He said looking at his son with a smile. Lin contemplating as she looked at her son nodded Naruto Naruto Beifong, it has a nice ring to it doesn't it? He nodded kissing his wife of a year as they sat in silence, watching their newborn son sleep when the door opened, showing a slightly aged Toph Beifrong wearing her police uniform, as Katara came in with her children Bumi, Tenzin with his wife and Kaya, as Kaya was gushing over little Naruto. Hey squirt water boy would you name the squishy guy? Her mother asked looking at her daughter. Naruto after the whirlpool it was Shimura's idea, Lin said getting a nod from Shimura, who handed their son to Toph, who instantly turned to mush holding Naruto in her arms. He's going to be a heartbreaker in the future Lin I can see it, Katara said checking him over seeing he was perfectly healthy. I can safely say he'll get his looks from his mom and personality too Toph said getting a nod from the others. And me? Shimura asked as the others stared at him trying to think of what his and Lin's son would get from him. Your Raymond addictions. Tenzin said with a nod from the others, well said airbender got a glare from the waterbender. 
I'll crush any girl who comes near my son without a moment's hesitation, Lin said getting a laugh from the gathered party. I feel he's going to have an important role to play in the future Kaya said, making the others raise an eyebrow. What makes you say that? Lin asked as the others were curious as well. Call it a hunch if you want, but it's the energy I feel coming from him that leads me to believe he'll be a greater waterbender than you mom, and an even greater earthbender than you Toph Kaya explained, getting a shrug from the head of the metal bending police force. Wouldn't doubt it the Kaya coming from him is immense. Why if I didn't believe it I'd say he was the next avatar, but it's too soon for that, Toph said a little sad since Ong passed away a couple of years ago. Everyone continued talking and gushing over Naruto, until a loud snore broke up the noise making them see Lin asleep holding Naruto. Let's get out of here. All that must have wore her out Katara said getting a positive from the others as they crept out of the room, missing the tattoo of a dragon form from his wrist up to his arm, slightly coming over his right shoulder blade. Six years later. How on Naruto get into your horse dance. Toph said to her grandson as they stood in the Bayfrong home's vast backyard and she was instructing him in the arts of earth bending with her daughter watching right behind her next to Kaya. It's been six years since his birth and five years since Shimura's death as an accident when one of the many gangs attacked and killed him while he was in the middle of a job, but he wouldn't go down without swinging. He used his water bending to collapse the pipes around them, causing the house's structure to fall around them, catching some of the triple threats weakening them, while the rest of the triple threats were under the anger of the recently promoted Captain Lin, for attacking her and killing her husband and the father of her child, who was an honest natural at water bending, and was a prodigy of earth. Bending. Now mudslinger she said with a grin much to his ire. Granny Toph has been calling him either that or fishcake for as long as he could remember, and she wouldn't quit until she said he was either a stronger than her or b change his name to something else, and he sure as hell wasn't going to do either. I honestly wish you'd stop calling me that Naruto remarked quietly under his breath drawing a smirk from the women. What was that fishcake? You want double the training today. No problem anything for my cute little grandson. Toph said hearing him perfectly just like his mother and godmother Kaya who were both laughing although Naruto didn't necessarily mind, since this was helping him gain better control over his control over Earth like Kaya and Katara, has him work with his control over water since the time he pulled water from the air around him when he was three. Again he grumbled when she asked him what he said he responded yes Shifu Toph ready when you are. But now be prepared because I'm coming at ya. Toph said as she got in her stance wearing her training clothes consisting of shorts and a shirt, while Naruto was wearing the same with a set of bandages around his eyes with his hair and a loose ponytail. Aren't you worried he might hurt himself Lin? I mean Toph seems to be working him a little harder than usual, even for their standard training, Kaya said, worried for her godson's safety, since the last time he went through this type of training, he came back with a dislocated shoulder and a fractured ankle and a minor concussion. It's fine Kaya I trust mom besides he's a tough boy and you can't forget he tends to heal rather quickly and he's made of stronger stuff than others, even for an earthbender she said speaking the truth every time he suffers serious injuries or even a cut, it tends to heal from the span of either a couple of seconds or at the most a week where it would take others longer while his bones were as sturdy and dense as steel. Yeah, but Kaya started when Naruto got blasted into the space between the two of them before he charged back at her. I still can't help but worry. I mean he is my only godson let alone any child I see as a nephew, since Tenzin is too much of a chicken to tie the knot with Pima poor girl, sometimes I feel my brother is leading her on she said, getting a nod from Lin. Yeah I agree with you on that one. It's been some time since the two got together and he hasn't even made a single move on her she said with a nod. I you might want to put fish cake to bed kids all tuckered out, but I gotta admit he's getting better give him a few more years, and he may just be better than me Toph said, showing he did get a good show with a large bruise forming on her stomach flinching when Kaya touched it. Grabbing Naruto from her Kaya said seems you've got a few bruised ribs if not at least cracked. I swear he's going to surprise us even more. The two women nodded as Lin held her son on her back while he slept exhausted from his training for the day, while in another part of the world, another interesting event was taking place in the water tribe. He wanted us to see something. A man asked entering an igloo with two others as a husband and wife stepped aside. It better be important otherwise this would have been a colossal waste of time, a second man said walking in behind the first with a third following close by, when they were greeted by a five-year-old girl, shooting a small burst of fire, causing the second man's shirt to catch fire before stomping her foot, making the three fall on their back, while water bending the small pool next to her at her feet. The douse the fire getting the three men wet. I'm the new avatar so you better deal with it. The little girl said before stomping the ground sending them out the house. I wish you didn't have your friend watch her that one time she's become a lot like Han, her mother said getting a chuckle from her father. I didn't necessarily think it was such a bad idea at the moment when Han offered some time ago he said in his defense getting a glare. 
Buhan do you know another idea that isn't so bad and thought dear husband? She said a little too sweetly giving the man a bad feeling while their daughter stares with a questioning look. Um. No my dearest snowflake. He said fearfully. You will be sleeping in the living room tonight she said picking up her daughter ignoring her husband's whimpering. Say night night to daddy Cora her mother said getting a wide-eyed look from the husband. Night daddy love you, Cora said sleepily getting a wave goodbye in return. Night sweetie love you too he said as the door shut making him smack his forehead. Stupid Han I told you not to do anything like that in front of Cora and you pull that stunt, he grumbled under his breath lying on the floor near the fire staying warm. Sniffing he turned his back to the fire as the lights cut off leaving only the dancing lights of the flames to act as a source of light thinking stupid Han. Do your later. You want to learn what now? Lin asked sitting at the table with her son two years later, as she and her son attended the funeral of her mother who died in her sleep, she left Naruto her chunk of space earth which she fashioned as an armband. I want to learn Kai blocking he said causing his mother to raise an eyebrow her son had the promise to become not only a masterful earthbender that could rival the avatar when in the avatar state same for his water bending and the dreaded blood bending when he accidentally killed a man who broke into his childhood friend fiance Asami's home and killed her mother while well, he may not use his bending. All too much and less necessary he is still joining the metal bending police when he's older. And why in the world would you want to learn something like that? She asked curiously to her it wasn't that bad an idea and was an interesting prospect in case you couldn't bend anymore, it was something to fall back on, so you're not completely defenseless, she even knows how and is quite the professional at the style, although she doesn't use it. Well there isn't really much of a reason to use bending on the non-bender's mom. You and granny always told me as the police we defend the community and those who can't defend themselves. There are civilians who think we benders are taking advantage of them or make them feel like second-class citizens and try to revolt I want to learn so I can stop the non-benders without causing them harm and to calm their fears that we're using our power to repress them he explained, making a valid point. The non-benders of Republic City have come to feel like they're being repressed as there aren't that many jobs for them since the benders have the real jobs and what jobs they do have aren't that glamorous in design or they work under the benders. Surprised and curious she asked, and how do you know that young man? Shrugging he said mom what do you think I do when I'm not in school or with Asami? We've constantly heard of civilians talking about how we suppress them or make them feel like they're second class it helps that I'm well liked by both benders and non-benders alike. She had to give him that one. Her son while a troublemaker made the pencil pushing humdrum life of Republic City pleasant with his pranks, besides they never cause any harm, just to give the people a chuckle or two, and then there are his moments when he helps people who need it like the orphanage the council refuses to help. He went down there and not only used his own two hands to give the less fortunate a proper home, but he told the council off when they demanded he stopped. Lin had to laugh at that one and eight year old, telling the council of Republic City to piss off and shove their demands up their uptight ass. She wanted to be mad at him for his use of language, but he was doing what was right, and word spread about his various kind deeds. I suppose you make a fair point son so you intend to use these lessons to not only stop the benders oppressing the people, but to get the people to realize that not all benders are as bad as they believe we are. She surmised getting a nod from her son impressed with his resolve. Looking at him sternly she said well I do know how to Kai block from learning it as a child if you're serious about this I can help teach you and Asami if she's interested, which might be useful to keep you in line son. He laughed with a roll of the eye oh you're right mom. You and Asami both have me pigeon squirrel toed, you with discipline, while well, Asami who oddly enough is persistent on me getting involved with another woman why I don't know, nor will I ever especially since I'm only eight. What? Me and Asami found out a while ago when we were six playing hide and seek in the house of shock that such a kind woman had such sadistic and masochistic quirks and interests I just pray Asami doesn't turn out like her, he said with a shudder, not too thrilled on the thought of whips and such. Lin said laughing well you can only hope so Naruto because her mother ended up exactly like her mother, before her odds aren't looking too well for you or any woman that tags along with you and Asami for that matter. Letting his head hit the table he said you're kidding. Receiving a negative he groaned as she sipped on her coffee patting him on the head thinking oh son, you have no idea what type of torture you're getting yourself into. So how are things in the academy? Are you doing well in your studies? She asked curious about his grades in the metal benders police academy. It was for earthbenders to participate in the class to earn their position in the force. Lifting his head he said flatly mom you drilled every bit of important information into my head since I first attended last year. Frankly compared to learning from you it's all rather dull learning something that you already know. True but the teachers tell me you tend to sleep during the classes. I know the lectures are boring, but you have to at least pretend to care she said getting a nod. I know but I can't help it. My grades are at the top and I'm the best in the practices and stuff, but just listening to the teachers drone on monotonously is a real pain. 
I mean I could rather watch paint dry on a drywall than listen to someone talk with zero emotion or effort to keep your attention he explained. She couldn't fault him for that she was the same when she was in the academy, so she said alright but can you at least promise to try and not fall asleep during the lectures. I don't want to deal with the teachers or principal calling me to say my son fell asleep again. He nodded getting a small smile from his mother a treat that was rare in itself, something he enjoyed immensely, since she only smiled on rare occasions. Now you're about to be late to meet Asami at her school, since you didn't have classes today, she said, getting a wide-eyed look from her son which she laughed at. A-H-H, I forgot. I'm not even dressed why didn't you tell me sooner? He exclaimed running to his room as she shrugged. Watching him run around she said I thought you were just going to meet her dressed as you were. Besides you promised Asami to meet her I didn't think you'd need me to remind you of your own obligations. Oh man last time I was late she gave me the silent treatment for a week, he groaned running out the house with his feet bandaged while he wore a black jacket over a brown muscle shirt and grey shorts. Making a whipping sound Naruto shouted out the door I heard that. You were supposed to. She responded with a chuckle as the door slammed shut. At Asami's school. He's late again Asami groaned sitting on a bench wearing her uniform comprised of a black shirt with a red skirt and shoes with her bag next to her. You'd think he'd remember that normal schools end at 3 in the afternoon by now one of her friends said, getting a nod from her. Yes, but he's always been a bit of a scatterbrain since I could remember it's one of the things I love about him, she said with a sigh, waiting for her fiancé to arrive for the last 10 minutes. Ah ha ha sorry I'm not too late am I? He asked as her friends quickly ran making him sweat, because whenever she's angry those two run like badger moles after a fresh meal. Oh not really except I've been sitting here like a lonely girl for 10 minutes what took you? She said sternly making him cower. I, I had overslept this morning since I didn't have classes at the academy today, and when I made a late breakfast with mom, since she didn't have to work till later we started talking when I just learned you got out he explained, getting a blank stare from his future wife. You stopped by the Raymond stand on the way here didn't you? She stated making him straighten up. W what do you mean I ran from my house to here I couldn't have the chance to get any he said lamely before she plucked a fish cake off his cheek, knowing he was officially screwed. Uh huh and do tell me oh sweet future husband of mine what this is on your cheek. She said blandly making him drop his head realizing he was caught. Nothing to say for yourself. She said getting a shake of the head while the couples passing by had to admit the sight was rather cute, seeing the two act like a married couple already, while the men were sympathetic towards him, knowing what it's like to get your hand caught in the cookie jar. You know what this means don't you sweetie? She asked getting a nod from him as he picked up her bag. Carry me home please she asked kindly making him pick her up princess style as they walked off as the women cooed. Yes mistress he said with a bit of humor in his voice, making the women envious that she got such a prize wishing their boyfriend's husbands would do such things for them. Asami's room. I'm a little lower she moaned as Naruto sat on her hips massaging her back as Naruto told her of his conversation with his mother. So Lin wants to teach me and Yukai blocking as a form of self-defense, so I wouldn't be completely defenseless against Bender she said, getting a positive from Naruto. Well in her words so you can keep me in line, but yes that too he said when she flipped them over as he laid on his back with her wrapping her arms around his waist. I don't need to learn how to keep you in check buddy, but it would be useful to know against benders and non-benders she said with her head resting on his chest. Sitting up she said, but why do you want to learn at Mr. Water Earth Bender Extraordinaire? Well I don't see use for using my bending on non-benders, and they already believe benders are treating them like second class citizens. I want to try and change their opinion if not at least slightly he said, giving the same reason he did for his mother. She shrugged laying back down on top of him asking can you stay here for a while longer until it's time for you to go. I had a tough time at school and I just want to be around you. He patted her back giving a positive as she soon fell asleep with him combing his hand through her hair, since her fear was prominent since her mother's death, thinking he'd die too, which he assured her wasn't going to happen not anytime soon. Brushing her hair he said quietly I'm not going anywhere Asami no need to worry. Hearing this she sighed softly before completely drifting off to sleep with a smile as he soon joined her. Hey Chi finished that report as you requested a now 17 year old Naruto said, now standing at an impressive 5'9", wearing the metal bending force uniform with bronze lining, walking into the chief's office with a stack of papers in hand. His whisker marks had become more defined with his hair coming down to his shoulders in a spiky mess, with it coming slightly over his eyes with his steel gray eyes shining. Ah thank you Naruto heard you took down the triple threats today any trouble. His mother Lin asked leading the force getting a negative from her pride and joy as he sat on the corner of her desk. Not in the slightest really if anything they were too easy. 
although I heard a transmission from the radio about Amon the guy seems to really know how to get people practically every non-bender has a ear out for him, he said with a sigh which she could understand it's been a few years since this masked man came out and started preaching about the evils of benders and their oppression. Naruto does what he can to appease the masses, but with things are getting and Republic City could expect a revolt at the rate he's going, and her son's efforts can only do so much with this happening with him being the only bender trying along with his mother and Tenzin, and a few small groups around Republic City, doing their best to show benders aren't oppressing anyone. We can only do so much son you know that if only we could find this Amon to begin with for starters, or even a hint of who he is, Lin said with a heavy sigh, pinching the bridge of her nose in irritation. All we can do is what we have been and hope we find something out anything would greatly be useful to be honest Naruto said getting a nod as she pushed her papers to the side, giving her undivided attention to her only child. So Naruto what are you making for dinner tonight? Lin asked getting a blank expression from her son, knowing she always tried to get him to cook after that time she came home exhausted to see him at the stove, preparing a complete meal that wasn't burnt or raw, and tasted like it came from a high-class restaurant, and fell in love with his cooking instantly, as did Asami, much to his embarrassment. I've spoiled you and Asami both with my cooking you know that. He said getting a snort. But a problem son. A man that knows how to cook or clean up after himself or dress like he has sense are all fine catches. And you're all three your catch son appreciate that because I know Asami does she said with a grin, making him blush getting a chuckle to rise from her throat. Thought so what really what's for dinner? She asked with a serious expression making him chuckle. Well I've pretty much cooked everything at least once this month, so sea salt Raymond I suppose or Mizo and Naruto said getting a dreamy expression from her making him chuckle, knowing one thing she adopted from her late husband was his addiction to Raymond, and while she and Naruto don't eat it on a daily basis, they did so on a bi-weekly basis, if she had her way if Naruto didn't say if he was cooking he was only doing it twice a week for a week each month. Who sounds good to me she said getting a snort from her son, sending her an incredulous look making her chuckle. Of course that sounds good to you mom. Although I feel I may have to bend that rule for this week for some reason, Naruto said as an afterthought getting a raised eyebrow. Why do you say that Naruto? She asked getting a shrug as Naruto contemplated before standing up stretching. Don't know but I feel like Republic City is going to be pretty interesting in the coming week, Naruto said before walking out of her office, after giving her a hug. I got a small bit of paperwork to do and I'll be finished soon, Naruto said as he walked out the door making her sigh with a small smile and make it on time to pick up Asami. She said making him fumble out the door shooting her a glare seeing her late husband and her son doing the same when her mother was in charge as she chuckled. Sometime later. Man I gotta thank Asami for this gift again this thing kicks. Naruto said driving his motorcycle down the street seeing Asami just walk out of the school as he pulled to a stop as she walked out growing over the eight years, looking like a younger version of her late mother, wearing a pair of pants and shoes with a black jacket that had her family's company logo on the back in red with light. Lipstick and eyeshadow on. Hey love how was the lecture? He said pulling out a spare helmet for her as she smiled kissing his cheek sitting behind him, wrapping her arms around his waist as she got behind him driving off. It was so dull. I mean you'd think being a teacher or at least an instructor would be interesting, but it really isn't she said getting a laugh from her husband after they reached the age of consent before she pinched his cheek. It isn't funny. I almost fell asleep from my own lecture you know. I would like it if you'd come to the next one I have and talk about your time on the floor she said, repositioning her arms so they were on his chest. Well I don't really mind, but wouldn't my mom be a better speaker than I am? She is the chief he said before making a turn through the streets. Well I do agree you know Lynn isn't going to go along with it. It's just not a thing to do public speaking you remember the press conference last year. She said making him nod while his mom did do the public speaking, she was rather curt and short with everyone, while he fielded everyone's questions and answered to the best of his abilities. I guess you're right he said as they continued their drive quietly before Asami picked up on his silence. You okay Naru? She asked getting a sigh. I honestly can't put my finger on it, but I just feel like something's going to happen sometime in the week something that will make Republic City a little more hectic, he said before she meshed herself against him. What do you mean? She asked resting her chin on his shoulder. I mean since Amon came around things have already gotten tense around here, and if it's not Amon, then it's Councilman Tarlock I just can't shake the feeling that the universe hasn't completely thrown its hand yet he said, getting a nod from Asami, since Tarlock has been trying to get hold of Naruto for publicity and raise his grip on Republic City for some time, due to the respect he's gained from the populace which Naruto shot down at every attempt made despite the various incentives he made. Well let's head to my house, and I'll do something special to help get your mind off that nasty feeling you're getting with a better one, she purred making him shiver hearing the lust in her voice, while speeding up reaching her home. Asami's room a bit of lime folks. 
Walking into her room she locked her door after tossing her shirt off as Naruto followed removing his metal bender uniform as she sat in his lap engaging him in a tongue war, combing her manicured nails through his scalp. Moaning she said gasping feeling one of Naruto's hands grope her chest while the other was on her firm rear, oh god I hate that you can't stay longer. Hissing her neck getting a louder moan he said slipping his hand into her pants I know, but for now let's just enjoy ourselves for the moment. Shivering as he laid her down removing her bra from her perky C-cup breast, kissed her before taking one nub into his mouth, gently sucking it as he fingered her folds, causing her back to arc as he curled his fingers while kissing his way down her toned body from learning Kai blocking. Pulling her pants off he said, now that those pesky clothes are out of the way let's get to the real fun. Oh spirits. Naruto I love you so much. Asami panted feeling her climax reach its peak as she felt his tongue circle around her sensitive bundle of nerves, before closing his lips around it and sucked on it hard before gently biting it, making her hit her wall, as her juices sprayed across his face and into his waiting mouth, trying to get more out of her, before she collapsed onto the bed huffing in. Ecstasy. Oh oh spirits that was amazing. She gasped trying to regain her breath pulling him up to her as she kissed him before flipping them over with her on top, feeling the growing tent in his pants as she smiled. But you could use a bit of relief soldier boy she said sliding down his chest, feeling his muscles along the way before seeing her prize, as she pulled his pants down to see his 12 members stand at attention. Groaning he said feeling her tongue glide across his rigid length, I wish we could work off a bit more stress, but I'm going to have to head back home soon. Her eyes shone with mirth as she sucked on the head hard, getting a teeth gnashing groan while twirling her tongue around the head before letting go, saying then we better hurry before Lin comes tearing Republic City down looking for you. He chuckled before a shiver ran through his spine as she took one of his balls on her mouth sucking on it before letting it go with a pop as she trailed her tongue along the long member before engulfing the entire thing as the two shared eye contact before she started bobbing her head slowly. Groaning from the feeling of her warm mouth shift on his member while her tongue continued to twirl around it, she speed up trying to milk him for all he's worth before taking him completely in her mouth as the rest was hitting the back of her throat as she used her tongue to scrub the underside while humming making him grit his teeth as he combed his hand through her hair, making her give what? Sound like a purr. Bug spirits Asami I I'm almost there. He groaned as she doubled her efforts before she felt his hand on the back of her head, completely sheathing his member in her throat, shooting off several large doses of his seed, which she gulped down greedily moaning all the while legging another dose of semen to pool in her stomach. Lime over. Removing him from her mouth she licked her lips with a satisfied grin before kissing his cheek, saying mmh that was satisfying. I'd prefer if we could continue, but I highly doubt Lin would be thrilled to know her son was late coming home because he was getting a bit of nookie in after last time. He had to suppress a shudder remembering when the two first celebrated their relationship it lasted into the evening way past, when Naruto was supposed to be home when they were interrogated by his mom and her dad, it was even more embarrassing because they were right outside Asami's door when they walked out. Let's just say the threat Lin gave wasn't one they wanted to call her bluff on, and they've been trying to have as much time together as possible, while being sure to keep within the time frame, so Lin didn't follow through with her threats. Pulling their clothes back on he sighed kissing her on the lips, saying I'll see you soon love. Nodding as she pulled her arms around his neck before kissing him again as said I know you do know eventually we'll have to get our own place right. He nodded with a smile as he kissed her one last time as he put his uniform back on before walking out the house as she sighed watching him from her window. I wonder if there's any good multi-bedroom homes here for a decent price, she thought watching him fade from her vision before plopping back down on the bed holding the pillow her husband's head laid onto her chest before falling asleep. Water Tribe White Lotus Training Fields. Dodging a blast of fire a dark-skinned girl wearing red armor, kicked a stream of fire at one of her opponents, launching him back as she landed she looked to the left, seeing two more, as both sent a stream of fire at her, which she dispersed. One sent another stream before charging as he continued his assault followed by the other, as he flanked right only for her to dodge and snuff out another flame, before she met the main attacker's charge who jumped in the air, making her go for a forward roll, letting her heel connect to his foot, making him fall to the ground behind her, as the other came in front of her. Attacking together one charged at her from behind, while the other sent two jets of fire out at her, which she repelled by kicking the first man back and snuffing out the flames before sending out her own, knocking him back before turning in time to block an attack from the previously downed man, before the two started to attack her from both sides. But the overlookers. She's improved greatly over the course of her training, an elderly woman said watching as one of the fighters was sent onto the roof of where they were standing. The portly man snorted saying haughtily she may be strong, but she still lacks restraint. 
Watching the girl and the man charge, he created a constant stream of fire which the girl charged into before coming out the other end unscathed surprising the man before using his shoulders as a springboard and launched herself into the air send a last attack, effectively rendering him unable to continue. Boohoo. Who's your girl? They heard her say in triumph while they remained stoic making her sigh before coming over removing her helmet, showing her dark brown hair, which was in a high ponytail with two blue bands holding her bangs. But with all the doom and gloom people we should be celebrating I've got three elements down and one left to master she said her crystal blue eyes shining with mirth before a man wearing red robes said. You're getting ahead of yourself Cora as usual he said getting her attention as she stared at him in curiosity. What do you mean? She asked not understanding as he sighed. We have still yet to decide if you passed your firebending test, yet you know he said getting a sigh from the rebellious 17-year-old as the man next to him added. Ever since you were a little girl Cora you've excelled at the physical side of bending, but you've continued to ignore the spiritual side of it he said as Cora had a bored expression on her face as he continued. The avatar must both to properly do their job Cora he said getting a sigh from the girl, letting her shoulders sag. I it's not that I've ignored it it's just that it doesn't come as easy to me like the others did. But that's why I should start training with Tenzin immediately he's leaking spiritual enlightenment, she said, trying to defend her case, as the others looked at the elderly woman as the same man said. And what do you believe Master Katara do you believe she's ready? He asked getting a nod from the elderly woman. Yes if anyone can teach her what she needs to learn it's Tenzin for sure she said as the others relented as they permitted her to begin her airbending training. Yes finally haha. She said grinning before looking at the others before coughing into her hand correcting herself. Um I mean thank you all so much for believing in me she said smiling before running off waving Katara goodbye as the elderly woman smiled watching her run off. Water tribe stables. Naga you should have seen me today. The girl said running into the stables as a large white bundle uncurled itself showing a mix between a dog and a polar bear as it padded over towards her tail wagging happy to see her friend. I kicked some serious firebender tail today and I passed. Tenzin's going to be here in a few days and I'm so excited. She said hugging her lifelong companion before laughing as her friend licked her before putting its saddle on its back, shedding her padding now wearing a dark blue fur jacket. Wanna go get some exercise after being cooped up in here all day. She said getting a bark from her companion as it allowed her to hop on its back like a horse, before riding her through the grounds to the gate as the guard looked down at her boredly. Mind opening the gate Naga has to get her exercise in for today. She said only to get a raised eyebrow from the man who stared at her skeptically. Come on. We won't go far besides where can we go the next ship out of here is a couple days away you know. She said getting a shrug as she made her point as the two large doors slid open, letting the two charge out of the gate, letting the large creature get its exercise for the day until the sun began to set. Poor his family home. Standing outside with her mother, father and Katar leaning against Naga, they could hear the voice of a child, asking a barrage of questions, as a flying bison flew overhead before landing before them, when the one on the head of the massive creature said with his son gnawing on his head, yes Icky at last we are finally here. On the saddle of the bison were two girls and a pregnant woman as many knew were their kids. His oldest daughter Janora, second oldest Icky, his only son Milo and his loving wife Penma. Excited the two girls formed balls of air as they rode down the sky bison's tail, as Tenzin helped his wife down, before he bowed to Katara hello mother, I can't tell you how happy I am to see you. Humming closer he whispered so only she could hear please help me. Giving a silent laugh she helped her son as she grabbed Milo who started to flail around, before he flew over her head as she said, it's so good to see all of you. Inora said hugging her said gran gran it's so good to see you I've been reading on all of your adventures, but I have to ask whatever happened to Zuko's mom. As she was about to answer Iki interrupted asking a series of questions without end, making her sister give her a blank stare, before she sighed as Katara walked over to Penma hugging her. The baby's strong I can see another powerful airbender in your future, Penma my dear Katara said, getting frantic look on her daughter-in-law's face. All I want is one child like myself a nice non-bender who doesn't blast wind in my face every five seconds she said, getting an amused look on Katara and the other's face as they all turned to Milo, who proved her point covering her face in snow from an airbending move. Shaking the snow out of her hair she said exasperated were Tenzin and his siblings like this. Laughing she said looking at Tenzin Kaya and Bumi were as children, but Tenzin was always just so serious. Proving her point as he begged her to stop before he saw Cora leaning to the side from behind Katara as she ran up allowing him to hug her. They all continued to talk until the concept of her training came up, showing he had a look of disappointment on his face as Penma said, you're going to have to tell her sooner or later. Confused she looked at Tenzin wondering what his wife meant until Katara spoke up, you're not staying are you? He sighed no we'll be here for the night and then we must return to Republic City to handle some business. 
You could see the disappointment in her eyes as Cora said W what but no you're supposed to move here to teach me how to airbend. Putting his hands on her shoulders he said I'm so sorry Cora but your training will have to wait for a little while longer. As they all headed into the dining room, Cora asked sitting across from Tenzin so how long will my training be postponed for? A week. A month or two why do we have to wait? He said simply, it may be longer than that Cora I have a responsibility to Republic City I'm one of its leaders and the city is in a bit of an unrest at the moment. Confused she asked unrest. What's the problem? Inflicted he thought I don't want her getting involved. Pens in what unrest? Cora asked again as he sighed. Just a bit of tension between the non-benders and the benders that's why we can't stay because I'm needed in trying to calm the strife between the two he said, causing the girl to drop her head for a moment before it popped back up. Wait if you can't stay why don't I just come with you and you can train me on your spare time. She proposed getting shot down instantly by one of the overseers from before. Sighing she said true, but with Tenzin going to Republic City, I don't have an airbending teacher to help me learn airbending, and there are no airbenders here. Interjecting Tenzin said I know how you feel Cora, but now just isn't the right time to begin your training I'm sorry. Aggravated she said walking out the door whatever. Water tribe peaks. Sitting at the top of the peaks Cora and Naga watched Tenzin and his family fly off while Naga whined feeling her friend's disappointment. Sitting on her back Cora stared before her eyes shone with determination as she rode back home. Later that night. Sneaking out of her home, Cora walked to Naga's place, silently telling Naga to be quiet as she placed the saddle on her back when she heard a voice from behind her nice night for an escape, isn't it Cora? Startled she jumped to see Katara standing behind her with a smile, before she explained her reasons as the elderly woman smiled, saying I understand Cora. Ong's time has long since passed many of my friends have also reached their end at some point or another, much like my brother Sokka and his wife Suki as well. Putting her hands on Cora's shoulders she said, it's time for the newer generation to make their footnote in the world and keep the balance in the world and you can't do that by being cooped up like some caged animal here. Happy she hugged Katara as she left telling her parents goodbye as she used her water bending to form a tunnel under the wall, allowing the two to leave, as they found a cargo boat heading to Republic City, the two snuck on and stowed away sleeping for the long trip. Republic City the next day. Hum on Kai what did I tell you about this sort of thing it isn't a good deal man Naruto said in his street clothes, placing his hands on the offender's shoulder, as he looked down to see a man a couple years his senior sigh. I know Naruto it's just with the jobs as scarce as they are, I don't really have much options to pick from you know. He said getting a sympathetic pat on the back as Naruto sat next to him. I know but you gotta think about your family I'm going to let you go if you promise me you'll quit this nonsense and find a job or even start one for that matter like a bookstore or something Naruto said, getting an appreciative smile from him as he nodded getting a nod in return as he let him walk away. Son if you're done with the good guy thing I must let you know there is a disturbance reported near the shopping district, his mom's voice came in on a radio speaker in his ear, making him sigh. Oh I was just letting the guy go he didn't do anything too serious you know just some petty muggings, and that was barely and as for the disturbance I'm nowhere near there in the first place I'm in the storage district he said, getting a irritated groan on the other end. Granted, but I suggest you get the let out we have a gang harassing a shop owner. She said getting a positive. Got it I'm heading there now he said cutting the connection as he used his metal bending to ride the lines overhead jumping to the next as he made his way to the side of the disturbance. Republic City Shopping District. Well hello what have we here? Naruto said curiously as he watched a dark skinned girl wearing primary shades of blue handle a gang that he was assigned to handle with ease, albeit with a bit of recklessness involved, as she destroyed a bit of property in the process when the other metal bender police came in an attempt to arrest her. Though that is going to leave bruise on both Shang's face tomorrow and his ego for a lifetime, Naruto said with a grin before running from the rooftops into a nearby alley. With Korra. Man what's with these guys I stop the bad guys and I'm the one who gets arrested what kind of backward city is this? Korra thought ridding on Naga looking for a place to hide as she saw a hand in the shadows wave towards her making her guide Naga into the large alley and hid away as the police just passed by. Why my that was a close one huh? Must have done something pretty bad to get so many metal benders on your tail, she heard making her jump, while Naga growled seeing a boy as tall as her wearing a pair of black pants. The grey sleeveless muscle shirt under a dark brown sleeveless vest with a hood attached which he pulled down causing the girl to blush, seeing his black hair come past his shoulders, as they grey and it glinted in the light with his fox-like expression and his whiskers. Easy girl I'm not here to harm you he said cooing at the large creature as he rubbed Naga's ears, getting her to lay down instantly. See I mean you no harm he said opening his eyes as blue met grey before getting a grin. Nice to meet you I'm Naruto, and judging by the looks of things you could use a friend at the moment, Naruto said with his hands behind his head as Korra sighed. 
I'm Kor and I just got off a cargo boat from the South Pole if you don't mind my asking, why are we in an alley anyway, you aren't a hoodlum are you? She asked suspiciously making him open an eye before chuckling as that turned into full-blown laughter. Am me a hoodlum? Sorry I may be a trickster and a clown every now and again, but I am by no means a hoodlum he said laughing making her huff making him calm down. Sorry but what was with those guys I didn't do anything wrong but help those people and I'm the one who gets arrested. She asked getting a sigh. Yeah well you also caused a bit of property damage in the process he said, making her deflate a bit remembering that. And then there's the fact you kicked a officer in the face I doubt he's going to be too thrilled about that one he added, making her collapse to her knees, until Naruto patted her on the shoulder. But it's fine you're with your own personal tour guide and I'll show you all the ins and outs as well as the dos and dons of Republic City he said, with his hand out for her to grab as he pulled her up, allowing her to stand. But what about the police? She asked getting on Naga as Naruto walked out of the alley only getting a grin. Still grinning he said oh don't worry they won't mess with me if they know what's good for them come on it's still early and I bet you two ladies are pretty hungry and I know the perfect place for a quick fulfilling meal. Looking down at Naga who had a pleading look on her face she relented saying led the way then Naruto. They walked out of the alley next to Naruto who put his hood back on. Time skip. To be honest, Korra was surprised everyone in Republic City seemed to have a strong love for Naruto from the civilians to the benders, despite the small factions. And to be honest she couldn't blame them for liking him what wasn't there to like. He was nice, caring, social, and helpful as well, and to top it off he was an earthbender, although he didn't really look the part, as some were overly muscular or overly defined. Lieutenant you have a target in your sight shall we deal with her? He heard in his earpiece making him TSK at the interruption. Quickly he whispered as to not raise suspicion it's fine go about your business, I have it under control here. Have what under control? Korra asked riding Naga as she looked over seeing Naruto having an alarmed look on his face. Oh nothing I was saying the police sure have things under control here. So Korra I gotta ask what else was it you wanted to do? He asked getting a questioning look from the girl as she shrugged. Well I doubt he's here yet so wherever you want to go is cool I suppose she said getting a grin in exchange as he nodded. Well I have a bit of business to handle you could say, and being in the presence of a pretty woman would make the day perfect, Naruto said, getting a blush from the girl as she sputtered. WWW well if that's what you want f fine I suppose she said trying to control her stutter as she followed him. After a few moments of silence she asked so Naruto what made you come to Republic City. Yawning he said stretching I didn't really chose to come here so much as I was born and raised here. I know every nook and cranny like the back of my hand as well as all the shortcuts. Confused she asked why do you know all of that? Shrugging he said well with how big Republic City is it's easy to get lost or wind up in the more shady parts of it, so you gotta know how to get somewhere fast and the best way to get there. That's good I guess she said confused until they came to a stop in front of the metal bending police headquarters. Confusion could be seen on Korra's face as she dismounted off of Naga, who sat on her haunches in confusion as well, until she saw Naruto's hand extended which she took and shook with a closed-eyed smile. Thanks Cora and no hard feelings alright. He said much to her confusion until she heard a click making her look at her hands to see a pair of metal cuffs on her hands, while Naga's paws were encased in earth, much to her shock, as her feet were soon encased as well. Then Naruto what's the big idea? She said alarmed before she saw him holding a badge as other metal benders soon surrounded them as she read the ID on it. Lieutenant Naruto Bayfrong. Of Republic City's metal bending police force, she read much to her shock as the pictured had the same face as Naruto's, but this one lacked the carefree expression or enjoyment she experienced today, as she almost flinched from the cold expression the photo held. Sorry to trick you like this Korra, but you did assault an officer of the law you have to at least answer to that avatar or not, he said as she sighed holding her head down until he put his hand on her shoulder making her look at him. Why did you trick me? She asked angrily getting a sad expression in return. Trust me when I say if I had the choice I wouldn't have, but it is my job as a member of the force to uphold the law I did enjoy hanging out, though he said with a smile at the end, which she kinda enjoyed seeing he was at least apologetic about all this. Take Naga to the animal pen until Korra can pick her up, you got that Naruto said to one of the officers, only to get a snort before Naruto used his earth bending to make him slide across the floor, till he was nose to nose with Naruto. I'm sorry what was that? I could have sworn I heard a snort come from you are you a pig all of a sudden? Naruto asked with a dangerous undertone making him advert his gaze. And no sir, sorry sir, I'll get to that this instant. He said quickly grabbing Naga's reins as he ran off with the polar bear dog. What was that about? Korra asked as she was led through the building as he sighed. 
Some people here on the force aren't too keen on me being a lieutenant, and after my mom steps down chief of the force, and they're quite vocal about that they feel that I'm receiving special attention being the chief's son, so they feel like I don't deserve to wear the uniform he said with a tired sigh as she looked at the others and back at him. Why aren't you wearing the uniform? She asked getting a chuckle from him. Would you believe this was my day off? He said making her laugh from the Southern Water Tribe girl. Let's see Lin said as she paced in front of Cora, who had her hands still bound by the metal cuffs. Multiple counts of destruction of private and city property. Not to mention evading arrest which we'll overlook as Naruto brought you in, but regardless you seem to be in a serious mess of trouble, Lin said, slamming her hand on the table looking Cora in the eye. But there were some thugs harassing those shopkeepers I couldn't just she started before Lin cut her off. You should have called for the police and stayed out of the way Lin said getting protest from the water tribe girl. I couldn't just sit by and do nothing. It's my duty to help people I'm the avatar you see she said getting an appraising look from Lin. I'm more than aware of who you are. The report the shopkeepers gave on you using water, fire and earth bending makes that blurringly obvious and while your avatar title might impress others, I'm going to tell you this now. It doesn't impress me she said narrowing her eyes. Fine then let me talk to whoever's in charge. I want to talk to Naruto's mother Cora said getting a grin from Lin. You're talking to her the name is Lin Bei Fong. Chief Lin Bei Fong head of the metal bending police force, Lin said making Cora raise an eyebrow before she thought it over before a light bulb went off in her head. Wait Bei Fong. You're Toph's daughter and that makes Naruto her grandson, she said getting a questioning look, followed by a nod from the leader. Then why are you treating me like a criminal avatar Ong and your mom were friends they saved the world together, Cora said, getting a sigh from Lin. Exactly that it's ancient history and it has nothing to do with the mess you're in now she said standing from her seat. You can't just walk in my town and dole out vigilante justice like you own the place, Lin continued when the window opened to show a man with a footprint on his face, giving Cora a dark look all the while. Chief Bei Frong. Councilman Tenzin is here he said getting a sigh from Lin. Let him in Lin said getting a nod from the man as the window closed before Tenzin walked in with a small glare on his face. Sorry Tenzin I got a little sidetracked on my way to see you, Cora said sheepishly as he took a deep breath before turning to Lin. Lin you're looking radiant as usual he said getting a blank expression from Lin. Cut the garbage Tenzin why is the avatar in Republic City when she should be back in the South Pole with you learning airbending? She asked getting a sigh. My relocation was delayed. The avatar on the other hand will be heading back to the South Pole immediately where she will stay put until I come and train her he said getting protest from Cora before he cut her off. If you would be so kind Lin and drop the charges on Cora I and Naruto he started before getting a glare from Lin. Don't involve my son. Lin growled getting a single eye to open. While Naruto and I take full responsibility for her actions and cover all the damages he said ignoring the deep growl coming from Lin's chest before relenting. Fine get her out of my sight and out of my city Lin said getting a nod from Tenzin. It was a pleasure Lin he said before he was pushed against a metal wall by Lin being held by his robes. And if you ever pull something like this with my son and use him for whatever goes on in that bald head of yours, I will personally see to it that the council is missing a member. And you know I am more than capable of doing so with no chance of me being caught Lin threatened, getting a hesitant nod as he and Cora were allowed out. Animal stables. Tenzin please don't send me back Cora begged while Tenzin ignored her. You blatantly disregarded my wishes and the order of the white lotus he said getting a sigh from the waterbender. But Katara agreed with me on my choice of coming here, saying my destiny is here in Republic City she said, getting a heated glare from Tenzin. Don't bring my mother into this. He said when he heard a laugh from the stables to see Naruto sitting with Naga rubbing her head. Man good one Korra the last time I saw his face get that red was when me and his son Milo dyed all of his robes hot pink good times, Naruto said as he got up with Naga, allowing the large dog to stand as he guided her out of the stable. Tenzin let's be honest with what's going on in Republic City, I hold zero doubt that you will be able to teach Korra airbending, especially when a threat can come up at any moment and the sooner she learns airbending, the sooner she can be prepared for whatever comes her way. Besides do you really want to explain to Granny Katara why you sent this innocent face home? Naruto said pointing to Korra who was giving him a look that would make a thousand puppies in a box seem ugly by comparison. These right tens in me being cooped up in the South Pole and hidden away from the world won't help me become a better avatar. I saw a lot of the city today and it's completely out of whack I get why you need to stay. Republic City needs you and it needs me too she said, making Naruto stare at her. You haven't the slightest idea on how right you are Naruto thought with a sigh before clapping his hands. Not getting a word and he followed the three as Korra said so that was your mom. Betting a nod he said I hope you can look past her no-nonsense demeanor, but she's not one to take flack from anyone when the town is concerned, but she's nice when you get to know her he said getting a scoff from Korra. No offense Naruto, but that woman is a hard ass she said getting a chuckle from him as he nodded. 
yeah she's the no-nonsense type. I mean I am too, but it took practice to be like that while she's a natural at it. But in all honesty she's not that bad once you learn about her and some of her hobbies, form a bond with her, Naruto said as they made their way towards the ship to the Air Temple Island. So your mom isn't as hard-shelled as everyone thinks she is. Tenzin said getting a snort from Naruto. Only to people who get on her nerves easily and aggravates her or hits one of her bad spots. Trust me I've seen several people get her mad, and several end up in the hospital, Naruto said as he leaned on the railing. So Naruto why are you coming with us? She asked making Naruto jab a thumb at Tenzin. Uncle Twinkle Toes here made the agreement without me and how I share joint responsibility for things you do here in Republic City. I.e. you get into trouble not only does Tenzin get in trouble, I get in more trouble than both of you combined he explained, making the waterbender raise an eyebrow. To be blunt he is a councilman the law works on his behalf. I'm a simple police officer and although the people prefer me over the council, since I give a damn about their problems and listen while trying to help. But as I was saying you do something it's simple to say 75% of the blame will fall on me, well 15% falls on you and 10% on Tenzin he said, stretching seeing a large statue of Ong holding his glider that gave off a golden glow by the setting sun. Reaching the shore of the island Naruto saw Penma and her three children Iki, Milo and Janora, standing at the pier, while Janora's eyes brightened seeing him as he waved at her, causing a blush to form on her cheeks. Docking Naruto was mowed down by Iki and Milo making him chuckle, while Janora stood back with a blush on her cheeks, before he was let up saying aw, I don't get a hug from Janora. I honestly think I might cry Penma. Looking down at her daughter Penma said, my Janora I would have thought you like Naruto guess the next time Tenzin and I go out for something and need somebody to look after you all I might have to get someone else. Going wide-eyed Janora created a gust of wind launching her towards Naruto, who caught her as she wrapped her arms around his waist, despite having difficulty squeezing tightly getting a chuckle from Naruto as he patted her head. Leaning near Penma and Tenzin Kora asked, how does Naruto know you guys? We've been friends with his mom and him since he was born, and when we were kids same for Tenzin's brother, sister and Katara. As for our kids there were times when we were busy nobody could watch them, so Naruto would look out for them as kids, sort of like a babysitter or a big brother, Penma explained as she watched Janora's blush deepen as she tightened her grip. Are you coming to live with us on the island Naruto? Why is Kor with you? Why are you giving dad a glare? Did he do something wrong? Iki asked in a single breath getting a chuckle from Naruto who was used to her long string of questions. In that order Iki. Yes I will be staying here for a while. The reason Korra is with me is because she is under my watch due to some events that would be too long to explain at the moment. I'm giving your dad a glare because it has to do with why Korra and I are here, which would be connected with your fifth question anything else. Naruto asked making the little girl remain silent before shaking her head getting a chuckle from Naruto. But now isn't it just a bit late for you three to be up this late? Naruto said with a raised eyebrow getting a groan from Iki and Milo, while Jinora pouted. Please Naruto I'm not a kid. I'm only a few years younger than you you know. Janora said getting a chuckle from Naruto. That may be true, but even needs her rest a big girl to grow. You don't think your mom or Kor got to be as tall or as beautiful by staying up late did you? Naruto asked getting a blush from the two while she nodded running off to bed with her siblings, leaving Naruto and the others. You know Kor after Grandpa Twinkle Toes died the city started to fall out of balance. Tenzin may have tried his best to keep things in check, but by putting your training on hold, he was trying to keep Ong's legacy going when to be honest you are his legacy. Tomorrow you two will begin airbending training, and we can work on earth and water bending, Naruto said getting a nod before she remembered what he said. My room is still where it was right Penma. He asked getting a nod from her as he hugged her before following the three to the temple. What did he mean I already have earth and water mastered? Korra said getting a chuckle from Tenzin. Naruto may not look it, but he's actually the world's strongest earth and water bender. He got his skill as an earth bender from Toph and Lin, well he got his tremendous skill in water bending from his late father. Actually my sister and his grandmother figures his control over those two elements are as great as your own, when you're in your avatar state in your past life if father was alive, he just might agree with us, Tenzin said, making Korra stare at him in curiosity. Just who are you Naruto? She thought before following Penma to the room she would be having during her stay at the temple. The next morning. The loud chorus of cheers and whistles could be heard as Korra stood before all of Republic City with a microphone in hand, while cameras flashed while Naruto and Lin stood on either side of her in their police uniforms. Tapping the microphone she said H hello I'm Korra your new avatar. As soon as those words left her lips the journalists fired off a barrage of questions causing her to get flustered, before Naruto stepped in as he said, people one at a time avatar Korra will field any and all questions you may have, but you must be patient and wait for your chance to speak. Giving him an appreciative nod for helping he nodded in return as she pointed to the first who said, does this mean you are permanently staying here in Republic City? 
As the group heard her answer the first question she heard started to become overwhelmed as she said honestly, I don't have a plan exactly you see I'm still in training, but. Pausing for a moment she said seriously after fumbling on the first part of her sentence as she said look all I know is that Avatar Ong meant for this city to be the center of peace and balance of the world. In the small few hours I've been in the city I've heard from many of you about how benders are oppressing the non-benders and how many groups chief and lieutenant Bayfrong among others included have been trying to fix the growing crack in that relationship. I want to believe we can make Ong's dream a reality and I know that with enough effort and time it will come true. I look forward to serving you all. Thank you Republic City. Cora said making the crowd cheer. That will be all for today thank you all for your time, Naruto said seriously as he and Lin lead Cora out of the crowd, unaware of the threat that was listening. The next day. And in the final round the buzzard wasps won the final round with a decisive knockout. Hey can we go to the arena tonight? Maybe check out a few pro bending matches, Cora asked sitting at the group breakfast table, while Cora read the sport section, while Tenzin gave a huff. That sport is a mockery of the noble tradition of bending he said getting a sigh from Cora. Please. I've dreamed of seeing a pro bending match since I was a kid and now I'm only a fairy ride away from the arena, Cora said, getting a blank expression from Tenzin. You aren't here to watch some drivel. You're here to complete your avatar training so for the time being I want you to remain on the island, he ordered getting a sigh from Cora before she perked up. Speaking of training where's Naruto? He said he would be training me in my earth and water bending she said getting a groan from the doorway, making everyone turn to see said black and grey haired teen stretching, wearing a pair of brown shorts with black bandages around the soles of his feet and hands with an emerald green sleeveless muscle shirt with his birthmark present with his hair done in a low ponytail drawing a blush on her cheeks. I'm here I've been outside of wake up schedule for so long I gotta get back in the swing of things. Anyways Cora, I don't honestly agree with Tenzin's view on pro bending, I mean it's not like back when Ong was trying to stop Ozai and everyone was practicing bending and fighting. Groups are split into teams each with a bender that can use one element save for air, since there are only four air benders in the world yourself excluded. I like it to see how others use their bending and what style they know, Naruto said joining them at the table eating a bowl of rice. It's despicable Tenzin said, getting an eye roll from Naruto and Korra, before Tenzin got up walking out being followed by Korra and Naruto. Fifteen minutes later. How come Naruto doesn't have to wear these robes? Korra asked wearing similar clothing to Tenzin and his children, while Naruto chuckled seeing the uniform while slightly baggy on her, still clung to her curves. Because I'm not an airbender my dear if I was this would be a totally different argument altogether, where I'd say it's because I prefer my non-restrictive clothing over the flowy fabric you're wearing. I like to feel like I'm wearing something, Naruto said as he stretched all the while Korra stared at his chiseled body and the birthmark on his arm. So Korra my mother told me you were never able to airbend before. Tenzin said ignoring Naruto's comment while snapping Korra out of her thoughts. Yeah but I don't know why. I've had an easier time with the others than I did with this one I mean as a girl of the North Pole, I would think my difficult element would be fire since they clash. Why is it that I can't do airbending? Korra said making Naruto think. Well Long had a difficulty with earth bending because it contradicted everything the airbenders represented freedom. With earth a bender must be rooted and firm like the earth immovable Naruto said, getting a nod from Tenzin, who rolled down Korra's sleeves. Um it's time for the first lesson, Tenzin said as he led Korra and Naruto to the top of the long path, as they saw several large wooden panels on poles with Iki, Jinora and Milo standing nearby. This Korra is a time-honored tool that teaches the most fundamental aspect of airbending. Jinora how about you explain for her Tenzin said getting a nod from her eldest daughter who walked towards the device. The goal is to weave your way through the gates and to make it to other side without touching them she explained getting a pat on the head from Naruto making her beam. That doesn't sound too difficult Korra said feeling confident before Iki burst her water bending bubble. Inora forgot to mention you have to make it through while the gates are spinning she said as Tenzin created a large gust of wind causing the gates to spin in various directions making her gulp. The key is to be like the leaf. To flow with the movements of the gate Jinora cared to demonstrate. Tenzin asked getting a nod as she walked forward dancing through the gates elegantly as she moved never touching the gates, once making Naruto clap. Air bending is all about spiral movements. When you meet resistance you must be able to switch directions at a moment's notice, Tenzin explained when Jinora created another gust of wind, making them spin in the opposite direction. Taking a breath Korra said building her confidence as she ran forward hitting the first gate, causing her to get knocked around like a ball coming back out, where she started making her growl before running back in. Seeing this Naruto thought with a wince wow this looks so familiar it's scary. That one looks like it's going to bruise. The more the kids talked the more it got at Korra before she started to snort smoke Naruto grabbed hold of her pulling her back. Calm down Korra instead of air bending you're going to turn the gates into kindling with how you're going. 
Here maybe if you saw it from the perspective of someone who isn't a born heir, Bender might help Naruto said as he walked forward. It was an immense contrast to how Korra acted as Naruto held his eyes closed as he danced through the gates before sliding out with ease before walking back to Korra who was dumbfounded. Ah you how? She said getting a chuckle from Naruto as he patted her shoulder. Trust me Korra it wasn't easy I had to carve all of those myself after destroyed them the first couple dozen times I tried learning how. You have to remain calm and feel the air. If you control the wind it will push you back, if you fight the storm it will tear you apart. The air isn't something you force like the other elements, with air you guide it like water Naruto said, getting a nod from Tenzin. Now instead of getting angry how about we got to the shores and you show me just what the white lotus masters of water and earth taught you, Naruto said guiding her to the shores getting a nod. We'll be back Tenzin not like we can leave the ship won't be back for another two days, and I doubt Naga would want to carry two teenagers back to land, Naruto said as he lead Korra. At the shores. Now Korra I know what you may think that the white lotus masters of earth and water are perfect, but I can assure you their styles are far from it, Naruto said as he demonstrated before closing his eyes, making the ground shake, when a large ring of earth formed around him as he jumped, allowing the wheel to touch the ground, with his feet planted firmly on it before moving around. Hunching forward he made the wheel shatter as it fired a barrage of sharp jagged rocks at the sea, before stomping his foot again making a platform rise, before kicking twice making several thin sharp blades of earth fly, chopping down a tree nearby. Whoa. Korra said amazed getting a grin from Naruto before he exhaled and extended his arms when they were covered by large whips of water that covered his arms up to his shoulders as they extended past his hands. Like earth water is a well-known element and with the white lotus only teaching one style people can learn to counter it. You can't be predictable with your opponent because they know every play in your book he said as the two whips got thin near the end as Korra heard a slight vibrating sound when he stomped his foot before spinning bringing the whips to the slab as it was chopped down in chunks with him now using claws. As Tenzin is your air-bending master I will be your earth and water-bending master. I will teach you what I know but do know that I won't hold back because my grandma was friends with you in your past life. Like mom said some time ago that's the past and we're in the present we may be friends, but I won't coddle you while training he said getting a nod from Korra, seeing that same cold look in his eyes as his photo did making him grin. I understand Shifu Naruto she said getting an appraising look from him. Let's see if you do Korra, but before you know bending you must understand yourself. After all a bender's skill is only as good as the shape they keep themselves in he said making her raise an eyebrow before she shivered seeing his fangs. Later that evening. Oh my body hurts, Korra moaned getting a chuckle from Naruto as he leaned down holding a bottle of water. Oh don't be a baby Korra that was the light stuff and we'll start that way every morning before training and as a cool down after training. Trust me you haven't seen the things I put myself through as a child, if I wasn't in school to be a police officer he said sitting on the cold stone floor with Korra. Hey Naruto why did you want to be a officer? I mean you don't strike me as the type to be a officer you're far too easy going, Korra asked getting a sigh from Naruto. I guess it's because it's in my blood. My dad despite not being an earthbender was one to help people, and my mom and grandma were police officers, as for my own reasons it happened when I was a kid, the council refused to help a orphanage that was in horrendous conditions, it barely passed the law to stand he said, making Cor gasp. It tore at me because many of us are fortunate that we have warm beds and warm meals in our stomachs every day but them. So I told everyone to evacuate the building with the beds and things of importance and tore it down he said, making Cor look at him. After that I created a large orphanage that held more than enough room for every child to have their own space, and I even worked on the plumbing and heating during the winter even came to cook a few meals for them. As I did this the council came demanding I stop and you know what I told them? He asked getting a shake of the head from Cora. I told them that it's the council and the bender's job to help the people of Republic City and to bring unity between all groups. If they had a problem with it then they could just go fuck themselves I was just a kid at the time and barely older than the children in the orphanage at the time. I did what I set my mind to and made the place better for the children, and even now as I pass by the orphanage on my way to work, I see those children's smiling face, and I know I helped in some way to show that someone gives a damn, he finished getting a wide-eyed look from Korra, before the two returned to silence. Hey Naruto do you think I'm even cut out to be an airbender? I mean everything else I've mastered in little to no time but air. Nothing, I can't even get a breeze she said getting a chuckle from Naruto. Her public city wasn't created in a day Korra. If it's worth learning or doing it's worth effort and difficulty be it bending or the everyday problems of life. I know you can do it just give it time he said getting a nod before they heard a radio nearby, making them see the white lotus sitting around a radio, making them get up jump to the roof above the lotus to listen better. Ladies and gentlemen I'm coming to you live from Republic City's Pro Bending Arena, where tonight the best in the world continue on a quest for a spot in the upcoming championship tournament they heard over the radio, making them grin leaning closer. 
grab your kids and grab your snacks because this next match is going to be a dozy they heard as the two stared at the arena from the roof while Naruto dived into his pocket, pulling out snacks offering Korra some as the two enjoyed the match. This Mako's got Moxie and advances firing two quick shots. Yomo is hammered back to zone 3. The clock is winding down can Yomo hold on as he teeters on the edge of the ring, now the announcer commented bringing Naruto and Korra on the edge of suspense, listening to the play-by-play -play when the radio was disconnected, making the two teens gain a look of despair, while Naruto wailed in despair. Why spirits why must you torture me? Naruto cried pounding his fist on the roof, making the white lotus to jump at the voice above them. Korra, Naruto come down here now. Tenzin said making the two sigh as the water and earthbenders grabbed the edge of the roof flipped inside, standing in front of the irate airbender and alarmed White Lotus members. Hum one Tenzin you shut it off at the best part. Oh man if I had money on that game oh the things I would do to you Tenzin. Naruto growled as water formed around him as his eye twitched in irritation. What would your mother say if she knew you gamble Naruto? Tenzin said getting a snort from the black and grey haired teen. Please Tenzin who do you think taught me? Scratch that granny taught me, but mom told me not to make a habit of it which I don't. I only do so when I know I'm going to win which by the way you three he said holding his hand out making them sigh as they each dropped a couple dozen gold and silver pieces each which Naruto promptly pocketed before seeing Korra and Tenzin stare at him as the three guards left. What? He said after a moment of silence before he shrugged stretching with a yawn, feeling his bones pop. I thought I made myself clear I don't want you listening to this distracting nonsense, Tenzin said getting a groan from Naruto. Tenzin it's their radio. Besides it takes her mind off the difficulty she's facing with her airbending, you don't want her to be stressed out while trying to airbend and end up doing what I did when I got frustrated to you. Naruto said getting a shiver before Tenzin glared at him. You're also her teacher you shouldn't be supporting her behavior and take training seriously, Tenzin said to Naruto who yawned. What do you want me to do blindfold her and place her at the end of a ridiculously steep ramp, I earthbend and put a equally as ridiculously large boulder at the top and make Korra earthbend it out of the way until it's second nature like granny did years ago. She has her own way of learning just like your children, your sister and Ong did. You aren't going to look me in the eye and say that you and your own sister and Aunt Kaya did what you're trying to do to train in bending. Naruto said folding his arms across his chest while Tenzin fumbled with his words. Plus if we're going to split hairs you said she couldn't watch a match you never said squat about listening to a match Naruto said getting a growl from Tenzin. Shouldn't you be in bed right now? Tenzin said storming off getting an eye roll from Naruto as the two headed to their rooms. The next morning. Standing in the pagoda watching the four airbenders and Korra meditate, Naruto laid across the railing before she looked towards Naruto, who shrugged as she said, I think I might be doing this wrong. There's nothing to do Korra just let your mind and your spirit be free as air is the element of freedom you must embrace it, Tenzin said getting a snort from Naruto. Irony at its purest form since unlike the wind you try to control Korra's every movement outside of training, Naruto said, getting a twitch of the eyebrow from Tenzin. I do not he said getting a snort from the two teens. You tried to tell her how to bathe and where to focus that's just going beyond control freak Naruto said as he scratched his head. Ignoring that just look at Milo he's able to do it, Tenzin said, making the two stare at the boy who was drooling with a snot bubble. I think he's relaxing just a bit too much by the looks of it, Naruto said watching the boy snore. Look Korra I know you're frustrated, but these teachings will take hold over time and click into place, Tenzin said closing his eyes like Korra did as well before she exhaled standing. Yeah I'm going to go stretch my legs, Korra said with Naruto shaking his head following her. Later that evening. All right almost there Korra thought sneaking past the white lotus after leaving her room standing at the edge of a cliff. Just where do you think you're going so late? She heard while she was in mid-jump to flail her arms trying to keep her balance before Naruto grabbed her collar and pulled back turning her to see Naruto with his arms crossed and eyebrow rose. I'm going for a swim. She said while Naruto kept his suspicious expression before she sighed. Fine I'm going to the arena to watch a game I can't stand being on this island much longer before I end up losing my mind just meditating she said getting a nod from Naruto. I won't argue with that one. Come on if we're lucky we can catch a match Naruto said diving with Korra following him. Under the arena's pier. Whoa Korra said getting a chuckle from Naruto before he shushed her before making her follow him as they launched themselves through an open window. Follow me Naruto said as the two walked through the halls to see a training ground which the two walked in before an old man walked in. Well I'll be a sight for sore eyes Naruto how you doing kid? He said slugging Naruto on the shoulder making Naruto chuckle. Korra this is old man Toza, but I just call him Gramps, he's been trying to get me to be a pro bender for some time now. He even taught me a few things if I ever wanted to entertain the idea, and I'm fine Toza Korra here is under my watch, and she wanted to see where the magic happened so here we are. Anything happened lately? 
Naruto said getting a shrug from the old man, while Korra stood there surprised. Wait you can be a pro bender. She said getting a nod when they heard. There you are they heard making them see a youth with short brown hair, wearing a red and white padded uniform, with one arm handing on a sling. Don't even try it Bolin you sneaky bastard she's with me. I see you're keeping out of trouble Naruto said seeing Bolin. Naruto do you think you can guys can come with me? He said getting a shrug from the two as Naruto said goodbye to the old man who started to lift weights. What's up Bolin and did that happen during a match? Naruto asked staring at the bandaged arm getting a nod. Yeah the game is about to start and my other teammate is close to quitting. We need three benders to play so maybe you can do me a solid and help a fellow earthbender out. He begged as they opened the door to see the arena outside. Bolin. What did I tell you about bringing your rabid fangirls in here get them out of here and let's get back to the field they heard to see a boy who looked like Bolin, except his hair came to a point slightly with another boy that had long straight hair. They co long time no see keeping out of trouble and Bolin is injured he can't help without only making his injury worse. He asked me to help out and Cora is with me to make sure nothing bad happens he said going into the lockers to change his clothes to the pro bending uniform while placing his hair in a high ponytail. Let's rock then Naruto said standing with the others as the announcer came from the center of the stage. Introducing the fire ferrets. Due to Bolin's recent injury in the last match, he has acquired a substitute to take his place he said, pointing to the red corner as the three slid out before he stood in front of Naruto. What's your name kid and why are you here? The man said getting a chuckle from Naruto. My name is Naruto Bayfrong, and I'm doing this because my friend Bolin asked me to help him out with this. Couldn't necessarily say no to the guy he said rubbing the back of his head, making several women in the crowd cheer for him and Bolin. Well the fire ferrets have come from nowhere and are now facing their toughest opponent, yet can they pull it off with Republic City's golden boy and every teenage girl's dream boy he said as the two teams got ready before the bell rang, making Naruto swing his arm launching a plate of earth at the person in front of him. Asok is the first to feel the fire of the Tijardillos, while the two teams try to blast the other out of zone 1. Trying to return the favor but they're too fast for him, the announcer said watching the match Korra had a large smile. Look at Naruto go like Mako showing his cool under fire personality. Naruto shows his quick wits and fast thinking striking fear into his opponent, the announcer said as the two boys fired off several things of fire and earth, knocking two of their opponents back to zone 2 like they did to the fire, ferrets knocking Hasok and Mako back to zone 2, leaving Naruto at the front line. Oh my it seems the Tijardillo's lead firebender and fire ferrets lead earthbender are in a stalemate who will be launched back to zone 2 or go overboard, the suspense is just too much to bear. The announcer said as Naruto and the firebender both launched an attack before knocking into each other, pushing them back. Oh my both Naruto and the Tijardillo's own Kai were both knocked back into zone 2 who will advance forward, we'll let the judge decide. The announcer said as they turned their attention to the judge by the board. With Korra. Oh man this is amazing. These fights are so intense. Korra said leaning against the railing staring at the board as the judge waved to the Tijardillo's. What? Aw oh, come on judge are you blind Kai got blasted to the back first. Korra yelled amongst the crowd as she watched the Tijardillos advance into their territory, while Naruto got up dusting himself off. Come on guys. Bolin said before wincing as Hasok was tossed back to zone 3 before getting tossed overboard. Oh this can't be good, Korra said watching as Naruto and Mako struggled against the three-pronged attack as they blocked and dodged two of the three before getting the brunt of the third, pushing them over to zone 3, making the buzzer go off for the Tijardillos. Oh man, they need to get their act together, otherwise the Tijardillos get a ticket to the finals, Bolin said watching as the match started getting pushed to the second zone, allowing the Tijardillos to go to their first zone, before the two cheered as they laid into them launching them over the edge. The fire ferrets inched the round in the closing seconds, bringing the game to one win apiece, but it's still anyone's match as we go into the final round. The announcer said seeing the two teams start making the two in the fire ferrets booth lean over the railing. Back to the match. Asok stumbles and falls onto his teammate Mako. He and Mako better act quick or the two are going to take a quick dip. The announcer said as the two struggled to get up before they were both hit by an earth plate launching the two into the water. It's all up to Naruto now to hold on. He's bobbing, he's weaving. He's weaving and bobbing. But he's not fighting back. He better act quick or the fire ferret's fabulous season comes to a close. The announcer said as Naruto dodged the three attackers as the two element bender brought up a plate launching it at the water bender, knocking him over the edge. It seems the fire ferret's plan was to let the Tijardillos punch themselves out and it seems to be working. The man said as everyone watched as Naruto danced around the other two strikes before sending a barrage of plates at the two. Naruto is on the offensive with Han in the pool as it's two on one. The announcer said as the crowd watched in amazement before he launched a plate at the fire bender making him hit the pole before falling overboard. Scratch that it's one-on-one -on -one and it's an earth-on-earth -earth clash. 
The smoke is rising covering the benders who will come out the winner and who will be sent home. The announcer said as Naruto and the other earthbender were in the center sending plates at each other, before the Tijerdillo's earthbender was sent to the end of his team's side of the field, while Naruto was still in the smoke, before Naruto was seen in the air with a plate flying by his fist before he fired it, aiming at his opponent's legs and another at his chest pushing him over the edge. I, I can't believe it folks Naruto Bayfrong has won the match. What a winged ginger of upset folks. I can't help but feel sorry for the people who couldn't watch this in person, for it was a once in a lifetime upset. Naruto pulls off the upset whining the match for the fire ferrets. The announcer said as Naruto pulled off his helmet waving to the crowd. But Korra and Bolin. Alright. We just need one more win and we're in the championship tournament. Bolin said to Korra as Mako and Hasok joined them while Naruto walked to the group. So Korra what do you think of pro bending now that you saw it in action, instead of hearing it from the announcer's mouth? Naruto said before he was pulled into a hug by Korra. It's amazing. I never saw bending like that before I mean I know you're teaching me and all, but I've never seen anything serious like that before," Korra said getting a chuckle from Naruto, before he was caught in a headlock by Bolin with his good arm. Naruto you're a lifesaver if I were a woman I'd kiss you. He said getting a chuckle from Naruto. I appreciate the sentiment, but I'll pass Bolin. It's the least I could since we're friends now can you let go I can smell your armpits and it smells like you've bathed in sewage Naruto said, getting an embarrassed chuckle from the injured earthbender before they heard Mako and Hasok argue. We won alright get off my back. Hasok said making Mako glare. You did more harm than good out there Hasok Mako said getting a snort from Hasok who took off his helmet and tossed it to the ground before storming out of the room. I can't believe there's such a style of bending out there and I've been immersed in bending my whole life. Korra said as Mako walked to them. You two are still here. Mako said getting an eye roll from Naruto. And you're still an ass don't see me complaining well not out loud match stick at least you could say thanks since if it weren't for Bolin being injured and he asked me to cover for him at the last second or I wasn't showing Korra around, I can assure you I wouldn't be here, Naruto said as he shook his head before turning to Korra and Bolin. How about it Bolin think we can show her a thing or two about pro benders style of bending. He said getting a nod. Sure we can show her the basics although I don't see how it will translate to her water bending he said, making the two turn to each other before smiling. I wouldn't be too worried I'm actually an earthbender she said, making Bolin stare at her and her clothes. Sorry I just assumed you know with your water tribe get up that you're a water tribe gal he said, getting a chuckle from Naruto. She is a water tribe girl she's also a water bender and a fire bender Naruto said with a grin, making Bolin nod confused before looking at the two. Yeah um Naruto did your mom or dad have a kid the other didn't know about before now. I mean you're the only other person I know who can use more than one element and isn't Bolin started before Mako said. You're the avatar and I'm an idiot Mako said getting a nod from the two. Threw on both counts she said as Bolin lead to the two to the training room. The public city training room. Alright Korra let's see what you got Bolin said as he and Naruto watched Korra stand in front of a net with two stacks of earth plates before sending two at the net getting an applaud from Naruto and Bolin. Good power but in a real match you'd be a sitting turtle duck. You can't be so upright and flat-footed, you have to be light on your toes until the right moment and dig in and strike. Naruto cared to demonstrate Bolin said getting a nod from the black and grey-haired teen as he stood next to her in a boxer's stance, launching two plates quickly. Think of it like the training I put you through for the past few days, Naruto said as he moved back to Bolin getting a nod. Alright let's try it again she said practicing her stance bouncing on her feet before she sent two plates flying one after the other quickly. Nice adjustment Korra like I said the practice of the white lotus will only get you so far for any style you use. You need to branch out which is why you and I are here to learn more styles of bending for you to learn, Naruto said as Mako yawned. Alright bull and I'm going to bed don't stay up too late and it was nice to see you avatar Korra Naruto Mako said as he went to his place of sleep. You two stay here? Korra said getting a nod. Yeah our folks died when we were kids so we stay here thanks to Toza and Naruto letting us stay here, Bolin said as they got into a silence. I'm going to turn in too if you guys want we can pick this back up tomorrow, he said as they nodded allowing Bolin to head to his room with his brother, as Naruto and Korra walked out. Naruto how do you know Mako and Bolin? She asked as they too got on a boat. It was when I was just instated as a metal bender police officer I was put on the line to intercept the gang and came across them. They weren't doing anything bad or serious opposed to what the groups usually do. Just petty things you know pickpocketing, counting the money and other small things. I busted them and brought them in and did what I could to make sure they stayed out of trouble, Naruto explained as he used water bending to push the boat to the island. Mako hates me because he thinks I'm looking down on him, while Bolin and I hit things off as I looked out for them. 
He even gave Bolin some tips on earth bending which led to the two of them getting to the pro bending league. He explained getting a sigh from Korra as they snuck back on the island before Naruto used water bending to push the boat back. Now get some sleep you have training in the morning, Naruto said getting a groan from Korra as Naruto got into his sleepwear before getting in bed. The next morning. Standing at the spinning gates again, Naruto watched Korra run inside frustrated before hitting a few gates making her start hitting the gates with her fire bending. That was 2000 year old historical treasure. What's wrong with you? Tenzin said getting an eye roll before kneeling down near Jinora and her siblings. He does remember I've had to replace that 2000 year old historical treasure a couple dozen times right? Naruto said getting a nod as Jinora came close to his ear. The last time he talked about it he said it was 6000 years old she said, making him raise an eyebrow shaking his head as he stood between the two before they came to trading blows. Calm down Tenzin. I gave you a warning that you keeping her cooped up without anything to calm herself was going to bring about negative effects. I mean Korra isn't a born airbender it takes more effort for her to do this and you're tossing her into the difficult stuff head first without any basics to stand on isn't helping he said staring Tenzin down. It just hasn't been sinking in like you said it would Tenzin. I'm going for a walk and calm down, I'll see you on the beach to continue training Naruto she said storming past Tenzin while Naruto shook his head. What's her problem? Tenzin said getting a sigh from Naruto. You're thinking like an airbender while talking to a woman of waterbender nationality, but the mentality of an earthbender. In the eyes of an earthbender you're trying to move a mountain with your bare hands. It's not possible, you have to ease her into it and explain like granny did with Ong after a while, and when you're training you try to tear her down. You need to pat her on the back, take the time to explain or show her what she's doing wrong, and go from there he said, making Tenzin stare at him. Look come down to the beach with me and sit in on our training. I'll show you how it works Naruto said getting a nod from the others as they followed Naruto. At the beach. Alright Korra we're going to work on water bending for a start. With water bending you have to be smooth and fluent with your movements, while not wasting a single movement, Naruto said walking to the water as he created two long mirrors of water that stood on either side of him. Water is the most versatile of the elements next to fire and earth, as it can not only heal but hurt. Like so Naruto said making the two mirrors swirl around him before a dragon made of water surged towards a tree before firing a sickle of ice at the tree, impaling it before it was swallowed by the water dragon that froze the tree solid. Before we start with the advanced stuff I want us to start of simple. I want you to get a feel for the water go lay on your back and float in the water. Once you feel a connection I want you to calm your breathing as you allow it to guide you, and when you do create a bubble to fire out a barrage of needles, Naruto said, getting a nod from Korra, as she laid on her back closing her eyes before standing with her on a platform of ice before crossing his legs watching her. You must remain calm and continue to breathe as you take action. The element of water like fire is a dangerous element as it can be calm at moments before it becomes a dangerous force that can decimate all in its path. For bending you can't just pick one path of the road to walk on for you will lose balance, Naruto said as he watched Korra take deep breaths before getting up slowly, creating several medium-sized bubbles that shot out thousands of tiny needles that buried themselves in the tree close to the shore, causing it to gain cracks, making Naruto grin. You see by feeling a connection to the element you can fully utilize that element to its fullest to where it becomes an extension of yourself. Earth, air and fire falls under this category as well, but earth is about keeping a firm grip on yourself, lose that grip, and it could be dangerous, an example would be sand Naruto said, making the group listening raise an eyebrow. Sand. Korra said joining him on land getting a nod before making claws with his hand as the ground around him shook, as a large ring of gravel started to crumble as it turned to sand before he jumped standing on the sand cloud as he flew around before several tendrils flew around grabbing things, before creating a large sphere of sand that expanded into several branches that stabbed the ground in a flurry. You see the Korra. Earth when used can be destructive either as it is or in the form of metal or sand, Naruto explained as he saw her nod. Now instead of overloading you will work on water for a moment so you can have a better grip over it. If you have water on hand I want you to act with it as if it were second nature same for your other elements, but since I'm not a firebender, I'm a bit useless in that field same for airbending, but you should be able to actually draw water from around you, Naruto said getting a chuckle from the girl. Now do what I do Naruto said getting in a loose stance as he brought a stream of water around him, which Korra copied as the two did a series of movements making the water dance, before he made two claws of water attached to his arms, which Korra did and started to do a series of slashes and grabs. Watching on the sidelines Tenzin saw the training as he thought Naruto is a good teacher with how he's guiding her but he's no airbender. Water and earth may be his forte but air is my field and I know best he thought watching Korra mess up a movement making Naruto stop her and explain what was wrong. 
How about we call training for today done and finish off with some light physical training alright, Naruto said getting a nod as the two stood straight, as the two bent their knees stretching, performing the style of martial arts Naruto started teaching her before they stopped resting. The public city arena. Hey you guys we on time? Naruto asked with Korra nearby when they noticed the look of depression. Am I late or did the other team forfeit? I mean the only reasons you should be looking like this is because someone died, your opponent forfeited or some other reason like you lost already, Naruto said as he went into the locker to grab a fire ferret uniform. We might as well have. Hasok's a no good no show he ditched us. Mako said when the judge came in. You've got two minutes ready to play or you're disqualified he said before the door closed getting a surprised expression from Naruto. Great there goes out chance of entering the tournament and the winnings, Mako said groaning. Why don't you ask one of them to be your replacement? Korra said pointing to the other three boys in the room in their uniforms, while trying not to eye Naruto changing into his uniform. No they're already on a team and the rules state you can only compete on one team, Naruto said as he stood next to Korra looking at her. Why not Korra? I've been teaching her about pro bending when we aren't busy training her earth, water and air element why not? Naruto said putting his hand on Korra's shoulder. But she's the avatar isn't that technically cheating? Bolin said getting a shrug from Naruto. Not necessarily if she sticks with just water bending. Now it would be cheating if she used all three elements during the fight, now that would be cheating, Naruto said when Mako spoke up. Not happening I'd rather forfeit than look like a fool out there. I already gotta work with Beifrong the last thing I need is to humiliate myself further by working with someone who doesn't even know the rules, Mako said getting a glare from Korra. Wow thanks for the vote of confidence asshole because if I remember correctly you need three members and you wouldn't be here now if Naruto didn't pull your butt out of the dragon fire last time. You want the winnings and go to the tournament we're offering, Korra said when the judge opened the door again. Time's up you playing or no? He said as the group went silent before Mako could speak Korra beat him to the punch. Yeah we're in just let me put on my uniform. She said making Naruto raise an eyebrow at her while Mako glared. You taught me water bending Naruto let me show you what I can do plus, if you're helping your friend I want to do the same she said, getting a nod from the boy before turning allowing her to put on her uniform. I don't remember agreeing with this. Mako said making the three stare at each other before looking at Mako. Fine we'll put it to a vote. All in favor of Korra helping with this raise your hand Naruto said getting all three of them to raise their hand save for Mako. All opposed? He said getting a raised hand from the firebender. The majority has it we're doing this now stop complaining Naruto said making the firebender drop his head. At the center stage. It seems the fire ferrets are full of substitutions. First it's Republic City's golden boy Naruto Bayfrong substituting for Bolin, and now we have a replacement waterbender. Let's see if she's a diamond in the rough like Naruto in the last match, as we enter the final qualifiers to enter the tournament. The announcer said as the three squared off against their opposing team. Whispering to Korra Naruto said, just stick to what I taught you and remember remain calm and keep a level head. Getting a nod the judge said, players are you ready? Blowing his whistle the bell rung as Korra swung her leg, sending a stream of water at her opponent, knocking him off the side of the rope, getting a groan from Naruto and Mako, while Korra cheered. Turning to Naruto Mako said I thought you taught her the rules. I didn't think something so obvious would have to be explained. Pardon the hell out of me for not thinking ahead of time to prevent that. Naruto said with a eye twitch before turning to Korra who was still cheering. The judge watching the moment said fire ferret water bender. Penalty move back one zone. Why? Korra asked getting a sigh from Naruto making her turn to the two boys. You're only allowed to knock the opponent at the back of the field Korra. Knocking them off the side is against the rules Naruto said, getting a nervous chuckle from Korra as she moved back making the bell ring, allowing the match to resume. Sending a whip of water at her opponent, she got pushed back slightly before jumping and sending a larger whip at her opponent, with her foot standing over the line getting another whistle from the judge. Penalty over the line. Move back to zone 3. He said getting a growl from Korra, while Naruto looked back watching her as he signaled her to keep a cool head as the bell rung. The platypus bears take round 1. The announcer said as the teams reset on the field before the other team focused their attacks on Korra. The platypus bears know a green player when they see one, and they are focusing the brunt of their attacks on this poor girl. Wherever they found her they should send her back for a refund. The announcer said as she slowly got pushed back as Korra created blockades to stop the attacks. Regaining her footing Korra saw the earth and firebenders send an attack at the same time making her subconsciously bring two plates of earth to block the attacks, making everything freeze. Did that waterbender just earthbend, the announcer said confused as the judge was just as confused on his call of a foul. At the temple. Did I see that right? Hold on folks we're waiting for the judge to come up with the final call, but I think this replacement player could be the announcer said over the radio, with several white lotus members sitting around it. 
Pardon me but have either of you seen Korra or Naruto? I went to check on them when I didn't find them in their rooms, Tenzin said as one of the Lotus pointed at the radio. There's no way. First there was Naruto Bayfrong in the match against the Tijerdillos as the replacement Earthbender, and now we have the Avatar covering for the Waterbender who became a no-show can you believe that Tenzin heard as his eye twitched. I'll get those two myself. Tenzin said storming off to the arena. At the arena. The judge said after moments of conversing with the other judges as he said, the Avatar will be permitted to play so long as she solely bends water. The other team wasn't too fond of it, as the match was about to start Naruto formed the sign a timeout as he walked to Korra. Or I need you to understand a few rules. You can't use two elements at once, you can't cheat like if I crushed pieces of earth and mixed it with your water to launch it at your opponent or other things. You can't be hot-tempered in this remember our training and Tenzin's training, and we'll pull through can you do that? He said getting a nod from Korra getting a pat on the back from Naruto as he nodded to the judge letting the match continue. The platypus bears continued to focus their attacks on Korra as she ducked and dodged around their attacks, while the announcer said, she may be the avatar, but she's no pro bender, as the platypus bears continued to exploit her inexperience, as she gives it her best only for it to not be enough as she's knocked over the edge. Looking back Naruto growled before brought out two plates and fired them at the firebender, knocking him in the stomach as it pushed into zone 2. With Korra. Damn it Naruto talks about keeping a level head, but it's difficult to do when I'm getting pelted by three benders with me being stuck with a single element, she thought reaching the lift back to her team's starting point when she saw a familiar pair of footwear, making her look up to see the glaring face of Tenzin and Lin. Oh hey Tenzin Mrs. Bayfrong what are you two doing here? She said as she pulled herself out of the water. Once again Cora you flagrantly disobeyed my orders. You were to stay on the island and here you are with Naruto messing around. It's a good thing I got Lin to get Naruto out of this stupid sport, Tenzin said as the two turned to Lin who shrugged. I'm actually here to cheer on Naruto. He's got a knack for it, although his water bending is his better alignment he's still holding up pretty well she said, watching Tenzin walk off. Come on Korra we're leaving and we're grabbing Naruto. Tenzin said getting a glare from Korra. No. We're in the middle of something. Naruto was begged by Bolin to help and I agreed to help because they were bender short. I'm not going to back out just because you can't stand something new or get outside your little comfort zone, Korra said as Tenzin turned back to her with Lin watching. I have tried my best to get through to you by being gentle and patient, but it seems that the only thing that gets through to you is force, so I am ordering you and Naruto to come back to the temple now. Tenzin said getting a scoff from Korra. Gentle. Patient. Every step of our training you've done nothing but throw me into something without knowing what the hell I'm supposed to do. At least at the South Pole the White Lotus Masters would take the time to explain, despite looking down on me for not standing on Ong's natural level. And what are you going to teach me anyway? To sit around the temple to meditate on how bad an airbender I am? I'm beginning to understand why I'm unable to airbend because maybe I just don't need it. Korra said yelling at Tenzin. That's ludicrous suggestion the avatar needs to learn airbending it is not optional. He said getting a negative from Korra. No this is what I need to learn. Modern styles of fighting. She said getting a shake of the head from Tenzin. Being the avatar is more than just fighting. When will you learn that? He said getting silence from Korra as she walked towards the lift with Lin as they rose. The platypus bears win round two. The announcer said as the two teams reset once again. Back on the field. Round three. The announcer said as the platypus bears waterbender sent several blasts of water at Naruto dodged them fluently as he fired several plates back, pushing him into the second zone before Naruto was pushed back by the firebender. Betting overwhelmed both the water and earthbenders pushed Naruto and Mako to a corner as they tried to regain their footing, the platypus bears quickly come out of the gate and put their focus on the main threat of Naruto and Mako as they struggle to get their bearing as they're wedged in the edge of zone 1 unable to help the avatar. Looking out of the corner of his eye as he saw the fire and earthbender put their focus on Korra Naruto ducked under the stream, launching a plate at the waterbender, pushing him back as Naruto and Mako struggled to catch up. Betting pushed back Korra thought back to what Naruto said keep calm and remember all of my training from Naruto and Tenzin let's give it a try. Higher ferrets booth. Looks like the avatar's pro bending debut is going to be cut short as she's pushed back to zone 3, the group of three hurt as Tenzin covered his face walking away while Lin and Bolin watched Korra balanced herself on the edge. You might want to see this Tenzin. Lin said as she made the bald airbender turn to see Korra twist and turn around the strikes. Hold the phone. She's still in the game folks and she's moving like an entirely different player. All of a sudden the platypus bear strikes are only hitting air. The announcer said as Korra danced around the strikes. How about that Tenzin said amazed as he watched Korra move. Arena stage. The platypus bears are out of steam while Naruto and Mako are still in the game as the two get on the offensive. 
Everyone saw as Naruto and Mako nodded to each other as they pushed the exhausted team around and over the edge, winning them the match. The fire ferrets come from way behind and steal the win. What a huge upset folks. If you thought their last match was a nail biter then this will have surely put you over the edge of your seats as they land themselves a place in the tournament. The announcer said as Naruto and Korra celebrated while Mako walked over. Korra that was amazing I apologize for being a hard ass back there and thank you for helping us when we were in a pinch, you really came alive in that round he said, getting a chuckle from the two. Thanks but I can't take all the credit I've had a few amazing teachers, Korra said as she punched Naruto in the shoulder, getting a chuckle from him when he heard a cough behind them as they saw Lin and Tenzin. Hey mom Tenzin I guess you saw. He said getting a nod from the two and Korra. I'm impressed Naruto and I'm proud you stood to your beliefs and helped your friend and you helped them qualify for the tournament, Lin said hugging her son, making him do the same before they pulled apart. Well you did tell me to stand by my friends when in need you know he said as she nodded when Bolin swung his good arm around Naruto's neck hugging him and doing the same for Korra and Mako. We're going to the tournament. I can't believe it this is amazing and the winnings will be greatly appreciated Bolin said, getting a nod from his brother as they waved goodbye as he walked out with his brother to celebrate. How about we head home, Tenzin said getting a shrug from the others as they were about to walk home. Actually I wanted to try something first, Korra said as they stared at her with a curious expression before relenting. At the airbender temple. Watching the white lotus guards replace the gates Korra said Tenzin I wanted to apologize about everything I said. I was really frustrated with myself and I took it out on you when you were just trying to help she said getting a shake of the head from Tenzin. I should apologize as well I was trying to teach you about patience and I ended up losing mine in the process. Naruto was right I was throwing you into the field without the proper tools to survive it expecting you to get it like me and my children because you have airbender blood in you you're not a natural born airbender. You're a waterbender and I forgot that he said getting a smile from Korra as she hugged him which he returned. By the way Lin and I saw your match you two were amazing pro bending isn't as bad as I thought it was after I gave it a chance to see for myself he said getting a chuckle from the two benders after the guards put the gates in place the two turned to see Naruto and Lin standing to the side. Standing in front of the gates Tenzin created a strong gust as the three watched Korra stand at the gates before taking a breath as he eased her way into the gate dancing around the gates in the same manner as he did in the match while Naruto watched the light of the moon dance on her deeply tanned skin. Coming out on the other side Naruto and admittedly Lin applauded Korra on her display as she walked over to them as Tenzin patted her on the shoulder. Good job Korra you move just like an airbender he said, making the water tribe girl blush from the praise as Lin bent down to whisper in her son's ear. How do you think Tenzin is going to act when he learns that you two are a part of the fire ferrets permanently? She said getting a chuckle from Naruto. I'm willing to wager a couple of gold pieces that says it won't be well although, I'm more so a sub in case either Korra or Bolin are out of commission, because the finals are in a couple of weeks, enough time for him to heal his arm and train. This is more so for Korra to have an outlet for her frustrations and relax. Did you know he tried to control her bathroom schedule? Emma had to draw the line at that point threatening him with him having to sleep in another room if he tried it, Naruto said getting a chuckle from Lin. Do you think I can stay here with all of you? She said getting a shrug from him as he said. You just want to have my cooking Naruto said getting a shrug from her in return as they walked to the main part of the tower for some sleep. Patching a worn brown leather medicine ball, Korra asked with irritation plain on her face, want to remind me why we're practicing so early? It's evil Naruto has to launch me out of my bed with earth bending. I wouldn't have to bend your bed if you got up in time for training besides if I didn't Tenzin would nag your ear off Naruto said wearing his training clothes leaning against the wall as he drew a blush from Korra as she admitted he was the better of the two options. As she pushed the ball back to bowl and as he tossed it to Mako he said, since we're rookies we naturally get the worst time slot in the gym. As Mako turned to Korra he said pushing it towards the avatar, and you're the rookiest of us all if we want to survive in the tournament, we got to get you up to speed, because I doubt the ref is going to let you get away with you launching a guy over the side of the field or using more than one element, so deal with it. Patching it, she glared at the firebender before pushing it with extra force towards Mako, saying you deal with it. As he caught it he went tumbling back when the group of four heard the gym doors open as they heard there are my hard-working little street urchins. Putting a hand on Korra's shoulder the man said, it's nice to finally meet you Avatar. Confused she asked and you are? Giving a chuckle he introduced himself as he took off his hat, the name is Botaka, I run the whole pro-bending shebang. As he reached into his coat pocket he said pulling out a large stack of bills here's your winnings from the last match. But the grin Mako was about to pocket the money before Botaka stopped him listing off fines such as Korra's uniform, training equipment and rentals, his and Bolin's rent and groceries, leaving nothing left getting a blank expression from Naruto. 
As Bo Taka was about to walk away he said oh one more thing the fire ferrets need to ante up 30,000 yuans for the championship pot. Blabbergasted bull and exclaimed tt 30,000 yuans we can barely make 25 in pocket change. Hearing this Taka gained a sympathetic expression as he patted the boy's shoulder, saying I'm sorry kids really you got till the end of the week to come up with the money or you're out of the competition. As Taka walked away Naruto and Korra stood next to Mako and Bolin, as Bolin looked to Korra asking, you wouldn't happen to have some secret stash of treasure or goods you or your past lives had lying around would you? Pulling at the lining of her pocket she said sorry I'm broke. As the others turned to Naruto he sighed scratching the back of his head, saying I may be the lieutenant, but my pockets aren't 30,000 yuans deep man at, the most I can bum you 9,010 at the most I'm looking for my own place, since I'm getting to the age of living on my own. Picking up the medicine ball and his carrying bag Mako said at least you got something. Feeling like a bastard Naruto said sorry man I didn't mean to say it like that. Giving a shake of the head Bolin said, it's cool Naruto we know you didn't mean it like that besides you know that after you helped Mako and I out after our parents died, the two of us have been on our own. Having a moment of silence Naruto said clapping his hands hey let's get over this funk, we gotta brainstorm on how to make 21,000 yuans. Excitedly Bolin said holding up Pabu his and Mako's pet fire ferret, I've been training Pabu to do circus tricks and people would pay some good money to see him do tricks. Raising an eyebrow Naruto looked to Korra and Mako before he said um not to burst your bubble pal, and not that it isn't a grand idea, but at the most you'd make within the time frame is just under 300 to 500 yuan that's counting, if you can attract them or keep them entertained. I suppose you're right, Naruto Bolin said as his pet ferret rubbed its head under his chin. I'll figure something out I always do Mako said getting a bland look from Naruto as he shook his head. How about we go for a walk and get a bite to eat? Naruto suggested as he got a positive from Korra while Bolin shook his head. Nah I'm going to try and think of a way to make some money you guys go on ahead he said, getting a raised eyebrow from Naruto. Alright man, but you can always stop by the temple, since that's where I'm staying man stay out of trouble, Naruto said getting a fist bump from Bolin before Naruto and Korra walked off. At the Raymond stand. Watching Korra polish off her twelfth bowl of Raymond while Naga downed her fourth Naruto couldn't help but sweat drop at the sight thinking is this how Uncle Twinkle Toes feels when he used to take me out for Raymond when I was a kid. I mean I even used to take Janora out for Raymond when she was little, and not even she ate this much. Going to his 16th bowl Naruto heard a chuckle from in front of him as he saw an old man with a sun-kissed tan with brown hair and closed eyes as he said, you know Naruto, I would never have imagined you'd bring someone else with an appetite like yours Naruto besides your mom. Scratching the back of his head he said well anyone could eat as much as me if they had a taste of your food too chijiji how's am. She's doing alright she's just at home sick with a cold he said getting a sympathetic look from Naruto. Well then tell her I hope she feels better how else is this place going to stay open without a pretty face. He asked getting a chuckle from Tucci as he took all of Naruto's, Korra's and Naga's bowls, as Naruto placed the money on the table with a tip as the two walked out. Who's AM? Korra asked as she and Naruto rode on the back of Naga as they rode to catch the ferry. AM is Tucci's daughter and she's like an older sister to me sweet girl, almost everyone in Republic City loves her and she helps bring in business since she's considered one of the most attractive civilians in Republic City, she's also a firebender, well her father is a earthbender. Her mom used to work there before she passed due to an illness he said, getting a sad expression from Cora. That's so sad to hear she said getting a nod from him. Yeah, but the two are pretty strong actually one of the gangs here tried to steal money from them, and the two kicked the collective asses of the entire gang by themselves he said getting a wide-eyed look from Cora. Seriously she asked getting a nod from the teen holding on to her from behind. Yup I was there when it happened. You see I was still learning how to water bend and earth bend, so they were looking out for me man am could kick some ass, she's considered the second Azula, with her blue fire bending he said, as Cora looked at him in surprise. Seriously blue fire as in the same fire Azula used when she was hunting Avatar on down. Korra asked getting a positive from the boy holding onto her as she tried not to blush. Yup that very same fire Tenzin and Granny Katara hypothesized that she's related to her in some form, maybe a great granddaughter or something, since she escaped Ong and the others at least, that's what Kaya tells me, Naruto said as they stopped at the dock, allowing the two teenagers hop off Naga's back and step onto the boat as it arrived ahead of schedule. Hours later at the lake. You know Korra I've noticed your bending has been making a great improvement, Naruto said as the two stretched as per their usual routine. You think so? She asked getting a positive from the dual element bender as he popped his shoulders. Yup but just because you're improving doesn't mean we're going to go easy during training he said, making the water tribe girl's shoulders slump when they heard yelling in the distance as they turned to see Mako running towards them. Mako what are you doing out so late? Naruto asked watching the firebender huffing as he bent over with his hands on his knees. H have you seen Bolin? 
I came home from working at the power plant and he wasn't at our place so I thought maybe he might be here, Mako asked as Naruto and Korra shared a concerned look. We haven't seen him since we left the bending arena I really hope nothing bad happened otherwise this could end bad, Naruto said as he scratched his head. As much as I hate to think it he has a knack for getting himself into stupid situations I guess I'll keep looking around see you guys later, Mako said walking away before Naruto put a hand on his shoulder. Dude I know you don't want to think it, but we are friends if Bolin is in trouble, we'll help you look for him, Naruto said as Kor nodded with her arms crossed. Yeah we can take Naga she said, getting a curious look from the firebender. Who's Naga? He asked getting a chuckle from Naruto. My best friend and an amazing tracker Kor said drawing a pout from Naruto as he turned to Kor. On here I thought I was your best friend Naruto said looking away in false indignation as the waterbender blushed. Of course you're my best friend, but Naga and I have known each other, since we were little come on we can get your bike too, I'll meet you guys at the docks, Korra said, as the two boys shrugged as they watched the waterbender run off. Sitting in silence Mako asked feeling uncomfortable as he looked at Naruto from the corner of his eye, before they walked to the docks so who's Naga. Adding a chuckle from the lieutenant of the metal bending force Naruto said, trust me Mako you couldn't possibly miss her. Infused he shrugged as they stopped a short way from the dock, where a Future Industries motorcycle sat as Mako looked at the bike in surprise, you have a Future Industries bike. Tuckling he nodded yeah it was a birthday present and I've been taking care of her ever since. Nodding the two boys felt the earth shake lightly, as Mako jumped at the sight of the massive polar bear dog with her owner on her back, what the hell is that? Tuckling Naruto said rubbing Naga's head making the mixed species creature's tail wag, I told you Mako you can't miss her even if you tried. Seeing the fairy Korra said come on we have to hurry the fairy is coming, and I doubt both Naruto and I could water bend the four of us and his motorcycle across the water. I agree well that would be a good test to see how far my bending has come, I'd rather not drown, Naruto said as the others rode to the ferry as Mako sat behind Korra on Naga. In Republic City. So your best friend is a polar bear dog somehow that makes perfect sense, Mako said sitting on the far back of Naga, as Naruto drove at the same speed as Naga, so he didn't leave them behind. I'll take that as a compliment city boy besides Ong had Momo and Appa, why can't I have Naga she said as she looked out of the corner of her eye at Mako, before looking at Naruto, watching the wind blow his hair back. As the group of four continued through the street they stopped in front of a metal statue of Zuko that was holding a ball of fire, making the teens dismount their rides. So why are we here exactly Mako? Naruto asked as he leaned against Naga with a curious expression on his face. This is Bolin's usual hangout, Mako said as he looked around as he saw a few kids playing around before he approached one. Hey you kids haven't happened to see my brother around here have you? Mako asked as the kids stopped playing while the group of teens approached the kids. The kid wearing a newsboy cap said maybe I have my memory is a little fuzzy, maybe you can help remind me. Pulling a couple yuan out of his pocket Mako waited for the boy to continue as he said, I saw him around noon performing some kind of monkey rat circus, it wasn't going well, I could say that much. Adding a sweat drop from Naruto he thought seriously Bolin. I told you this wasn't a good idea man. As the boy was about to continue he held out his hand making Mako slap another couple yuan in the kid's hands, as he continued Shady Shin showed up flashing some serious cash in his face, even dropped a couple thousand in his cup. Oh man not him Naruto groaned under his breath making Kor look at him. Who's Shady Shin? The avatar asked getting an irritated sigh from Naruto. He's one of the triple threats triad and one of the gangs here in the city I've come close to slamming his ass in a cell a dozen times, but he's as slick as a freshly waxed turtle duck's shell Naruto said, drawing attention from the boy as his eyes widened. Oh man it's the police I'm out of here. Shin said running before Naruto thrust his arm out making water materialize out of air as it dragged the boy back. Cool your engine Scoochie I'm off the clock now did Bolin go with Shin, and if so what do you know? I suggest you don't pull the my memory is getting fuzzy trick, otherwise I could put you in prison, Naruto warned getting a nod from the boy. He left with Shin after he flashed his cash the boy said before looking around, gesturing for the three teens to draw closer. The triple threats, the red monsoons and the anaikais they're all muscling up for something serious, that's all you're getting out of me he said running making Naruto growl scratching the back of his head. Just great all three gangs are gathering, and it cannot be good by any means, Naruto said with Mako nodding, while Korra wore a confused expression. What was he talking about? She asked making the two boys look at her. The turf war is brewing, and Bolin is going to be caught in the center of it, we got to find him and fast, Mako said, getting a nod from Naruto, as Naruto got on his motorcycle, while Mako got on Naga behind Korra as they left. So where are we heading? Korra asked as they crossed a bridge past the train cars. The triple threat triad's headquarters hopefully Bolin is there, and nothing has gone down yet, Mako said as Naruto drove behind Naga. The triple threat triad. 
I knocked some of those clowns around when I first got here why would Bolin hang around them? She asked as Naga suddenly charged down an alley making Naruto follow, as Naga chased something to a street post, before Naruto's vision was blurred, making him stop as he removed what was obstructing his vision to see Pabu. Pabu? Naruto said as he held the little ferret out of Naga's reach before the two started to sniff each other, before he jumped on Naga's head and scurried to Mako. If Pabu isn't with Bolin then things really aren't good, Naruto said as Mako told them they have to hurry. Triple Threat Triad Base. Something's wrong the triple threat usually has thugs posted out front we got to be careful, Mako said as Naruto parked out front before his shoes shifted to reveal the soles of his shoes, before stomping with his eyes closed, before they snapped open in alarm. What's wrong? Mako asked as Naruto shook his head in a negative fashion. The place looks like there was a fight in there it's completely empty, Naruto said as Korra kicked open the doors, showing he was telling the truth, before they heard motorcycles go on out back making the three plus Naga and Pabu go out the back to see a armored truck and several motorcycles in the back, with people dressed in bodysuits with glowing goggles drive off. Bolin's inside. Naruto yelled as he ran out to stop them before two of the motorcyclists tossed two canisters obscuring their vision. You guys go on Naga I'll be right behind you. Naruto said running back to his motorcycle while Korra called for Naga as they followed after the group with Naruto close behind them, as Mako shot a ball of fire at the motorcyclist. As Korra bent the earth beneath one of the equalists he shot into the air, thanks to Masked Rider jumping off the impromptu ramp. As they continued to give chase, two equalists tossed some rope, making it coil around Naga's legs, while the other got tangled in Naruto's wheel, making the animal and machine lurch forward, making the three riders fly off as they skidded across the ground groaning. That was unpleasant Naruto said wiping the side of his face as Mako and Korra nodded in agreement while the truck drove off with the rest of the equalists saved for four. If we want to catch them we're going to have to fight these jokers, Naruto said as he charged at the first flipping before going for a kick which was blocked as he made a pillar of earth fly, knocking the equalist in the stomach as he skidded back before he could hit Naruto's leg. Looking behind him he flipped over a jab kicking the attacker in the back, making him fly to his friend as Naruto said Mako, Korra be careful their Kai blockers they hit you and it's over. Not giving a reply Naruto focused on the water in the grate and made it solidify before firing a barrage of needles as he ran behind them, kneeing one of them in the stomach before twisting around to his hands, avoiding a blow to the ribs as he spun kicking them both in the head. I blocking gotta love it in these circumstances Naruto thought to himself before bending to the side dodging a kick before he locked his leg around the attackers as he delivered a series of quick jabs to the man's side before he spun around to the man's backside, getting his leg before he was kicked in the chest, making him skid back. Ugh that may have stung, but it barely registers as painful compared to all the training mom and the others put me through for years Naruto thought as he flipped back as B avoided a foot about to slam into his head from above as he spun around tripping the attacker before using his earth bending as he made a pull to slam into the Kai blocker before delivering a kick to the pillar making it. Crack as a large chunk of rock smacked into another equalist's head, making him fall over unconscious. Behind him he felt flashes of heat making him look out of the corner of his eye to see Korra and Mako try and fire bend against the equalist Kai blockers, only for them to be knocked to the ground after receiving a barrage of quick jabs. Running to Korra and the others he jabbed the third equalist in the ribs and between his shoulders, making him fall to his knees before he heard Naga making him turn to see Naga charge at the man behind him, making the equalists jump back tossing smoke screen as they jumped on their motorcycles driving off in the smoke, grabbing the two Naruto knocked out. Trying to shoot a fireball Korra said alarmed why can't I bend? As Naruto placed his hand on her shoulder he said calm down those guys are Kai blockers they hit you the way they did and they can stop you from bending they work for Amon before Kai blocking became what it was thanks to Amon, it was once used by a girl named Tai Lee, one of the two girls who once assisted Azula in chasing down Fire Lord Zuko, Iroh and the Avatar with Granny Toph. Wait Amon that anti-bending guy with a mask. She asked getting a nod from the scarf wearing boy. That's him Amon here runs the equalists what they want with the triple threats I don't know Mako said, getting a groan from Naruto. And here I thought we'd finally managed to gather some information damn it. Naruto exclaimed as he slammed his fist into the ground, making a crater around his fist with spiderweb cracks forming around his fist. Man he's stronger than I thought I gotta remember to not say something that will get me killed when around him Mako thought as he sighed smacking his forehead with his palm. I can't believe Bolin got caught up in all this. He exclaimed making Naruto put a calm hand on the firebender's shoulder. Dude calm down, we'll find him let's take a look around the city, maybe we can find some sort of lead, Naruto said as Korra nodded, agreeing with him making the firebender sigh before agreeing as he got on Naga's back with Korra, while Naruto removed the rope from the front wheel, making him follow after Korra and Mako. Time skip end of the night.
stopping at a random alley Cora slightly pulled back on Naga's reins, allowing the exhausted mixed breed to breathe as she plopped to the floor while Naruto stopped as he removed the key from his motorcycle. Stretching as she popped her back Cora said, we've been looking all night and there's no sign of him. In his exhausted state Mako said we have to keep looking, but where? Yawning Naruto said with rings under his eyes, we've looked all over the city and haven't come across so much as a tire track if any of you know somewhere we haven't been I'm all for it. I know we're a spot we haven't been to yet Korra said as she patted Naga, making her get up making Naruto and Mako look at each other with a raised eyebrow before shrugging as Naruto revved up his motorcycle following after Korra and Mako. Republic City Park. Stopping in front of the fountain Naga and Pabu drank from the water Naruto dipped his face into the water before pulling it back out as he breathed in relief sitting next to Korra with Mako on her right while Naruto wrung out his hair. When I first came to Republic City I ran into an equalist protester she said, pointing ahead of her at a vacant spot. And you believe this protester might know where Bolin is? Mako asked getting a nod from her as Naruto sighed. I hate to say this especially when it sounds like I'm giving up, but me, mom and the rest of the police force have tried interrogating them, and they never gave of any useful information that or gave us false leads if he does speak, you'd have to be really certain it's the truth Naruto said stretching as he popped his back. Either way it's our only lead right now Naruto what's with the bag anyway? Korra said as she and Mako noticed the bag slung over his shoulder. My police uniform I carried with me because I felt we'd be out looking for Bolin all night and wanted to be dressed ahead of time, Naruto said as he got up walking behind a tall bush, changing into his uniform as he saw Korra and Mako sitting against Naga, making him rest against her hind leg. So why is Bolin running around with a triple threat triad anyway? Korra asked making the two male teens sigh. You want to tell her Naruto? Mako asked getting a shrug. If you want what you see Korra Mako and Bolin used to do work for them back in the day and no, they aren't criminals Korra, they ran numbers for the triple threats pretty, much the only thing they could do, since they were orphans out on the street doing what they had to in order to survive and for him to protect Bolin Naruto said, getting a nod from the firebender. I can honestly say if it were me in Mako's position I'd do the same thing. If I have to look out for my brother I'd do whatever was necessary in fact when I found them I bumped into them while they were working and booked them they got a minor sentence, but they were okay, and I then showed Bolin and Mako the pro bending place where they could work and practice their bending and have live Naruto. Said as he scratched his head. I I'm sorry can I ask what happened to your parents? Korra asked making both Mako and Naruto look at her, well Mako wasn't expecting it and was reluctant Naruto was curious as well, since neither Bolin nor Mako told him. Looking at Korra he said pulling up his scarf, they were mugged by a firebender he cut them down right in front of me, and I was eight at the time. Bolin is all the family I have left if something happened to him I don't know what I'd do. If this is the same protester I think you're talking about Korra, then we better get some sleep at least this way we'd be somewhat rested, Naruto said, as the others nodded as Naruto and the others pushed themselves deeper into Naga's side. A few hours later. The sight many passerbys came across was the golden boy Naruto sleeping against the avatar with her head on his lap and his hand on her hip, while Mako was lying on Naga's front paw using her head as a pillow, until they were woken up by the yelling of a megaphone, making the three teens open their eyes, as Naruto looked down, making his eyes meet Korra's before they moved from each other with a lush ignoring the silent chuckle Mako sent their way. Hearing the yelling again they heard equality now. Equality now. We want equality now. Point across the bridge as he stretched Naruto said I take it he's the guy you saw when you came here. She nodded as they listened to the protester who had wide sideburns wearing grey black and white clothes non-benders of Republic City. Amon calls you to take back your city. Walking forward they saw the protester standing on a wood table before he gasped saying with his megaphone pointing at Naruto and Korra, it's you again. You cannot silence me Avatar not even with those benders you brought along with you. Smacking the megaphone out of his hands breaking it she said shut up and listen Mako's brother was kidnapped by Kai blockers, where did they take them? I have nothing to say he said before he felt Naruto's hand on his shoulder, making him turn to see the glaring eyes of the dark haired teen, as he noticed Naruto's eyes shift to a red color with slighted pupils, before changing back to their normal color. I doubt your family will be too willing to get you out of prison after them having to do this the last 20 times they saved your hide. I can take you to prison right now with this evidence alone Naruto said, making the man sweat. W what evidence he said as Korra stomped on the ground making the table fly in the air, making the stacks of papers on the table fly around the area, while Naruto snatched one from the air, seeing a segment of a map and Amon's illustration on it. You are working with Amon and Amon leads the equalist which kidnapped Mako's brother Bolin. If you refuse to cooperate I will take you in for questioning and seeing as we're in need of information on Equalist and Amon, I can assure you the council will find you guilty along with your friend here and hold you both for possibly years as losing your family and friends worth staying in prison for. Someone who might not come to save your hide. 
For all we know the council may pin the crimes Amon and the equalist has committed on you too Naruto said, holding one of the flyers that fell to the ground. Picking a flyer off the ground Mako Red witness the revelation tonight 9 o'clock what's the revelation? Keeping his mouth shut his silent friend spoke up saying nobody knows what the revelation is and we honestly don't know what happened to your friend I swear, but if he's a bender, then the spirits aren't on his side at the moment. Jin. The frightened protester said getting raised hands from the now spoken Jin as he turned to his friend. I'm not losing my wife and daughter just because you don't want to talk mushy. You want to end up in prison that's on you, I'd like to see my daughter and wife thank you, he said as Naruto turned to Jin as he let go of mushy. Thank you Jin I appreciate your cooperation do you know anything about this map piece on the back? Naruto asked showing the flyer as the man took hold of it looking. The map piece is a secret location that holds the revelation if you find it, then you can see the event, it's why the police never found anything he said, making Naruto nod as he and his mom were part of the many raids as they found nothing every time. That's all we wanted, but just so you know not all benders are bad I'll agree there are many of us who oppress non-benders, but many of us have no desire to cause harm only to protect. I hope many of you will realize this someday, Naruto said as he and the others made their way back over to Naga and his bike, as Pabu stood on the seat chattering at Naga. Since it's morning how about we get something in our stomach we can't plan without something to eat, Naruto said as their stomachs roared in agreement. Good idea we got to figure out what this map piece goes to it has to be something specific, Mako said as he vaulted on the back of Naga, while Naruto's motorcycle roared to life as they made their way to a place to eat. At the Raymond stand. Why don't they mark the location on these things? Korra asked polishing off her fifth bowl of Raymond, while Mako was on his third, Naruto downed his eighth bowl. It's like Jin said they don't want the police or a league of benders trying to find them, Naruto said as he looked at the couple flyers Mako grabbed as they left. We know it's a segment of a map, but Amon might try and put it somewhere else, for all we know it could be outside Republic City the firebender said as he looked at the single red marker that adorned the map before he picked them up holding pieces together. What if it's a puzzle? Look at the flyers they all cut off at certain points, but if you do it like this, Korra said taking the pieces Mako had and the pieces Naruto had and held them in a certain way making a larger image. Then it becomes a larger map but now that you hold it up I swear I've seen that section before Naruto said before he turned to Tucci. Hey old man do you happen to have a map of Republic City lying around? He asked getting a nod from the chef as he went in back as Korra and Mako looked at him. Why do you want a map of Republic City? Didn't you say it probably wasn't here? Mako asked getting a nod from Naruto. I did but when I saw how the pieces fit together, it formed a portion of the map that rung a bell with me, Naruto said as Tucci came in with a map of the city, as Naruto thanked him before he took the pieces from Korra and glided them across the map before stopping over a matching section. That's where it's happening in the industrial district, but if we're going to save Bolin, we'll need disguises and as mad as I am to say only the three of us can do this, Naruto said, making Korra and Mako look at him. Why? Korra asked with Mako just as curious. Think about it yeah it's likely groups are going to go there together, but if we brought the police force they'd need their suits like I would, but I'm used to espionage missions. If we came by the net full the place would clear out fast Naruto said, making Mako not understanding him. And if that happened they'd take the captives somewhere else and do whatever they're doing in private or worse Mako finished getting a nod from Naruto. Like I said I'm no fan of this idea as much as you too, but if we want to save Bolin this is our only choice, Naruto said as he stared at the others. I know just the disguises Korra said with a glint in her eyes, making Naruto and Mako look at each other with a nervous expression. In the industrial district. I can't believe you got me wearing this jet of Mako said as he held a fake cane with black tinted glasses, hiding what appeared to be a burn going over his eyes covering his eyes wearing a beige jacket that clasped shut on the right and hat. Oh lighten up besides you want to save Bolin don't you? Korra asked wearing a similar jacket with the sleeves rolled up wearing a cream colored hat with a green leaf on the hem of the hat in addition with Mako's scarf. Yeah brother besides we're in and then we're out, Naruto said wearing a black jacket with a red wig and makeup, covering his whisker marks and a scar going over his right eye, which was partially covered by his hair, as they turned to see everyone make their way to the building in front of them. Everyone remember our cover story in case we're confronted by equalists? Naruto asked getting a nod from the two. Of course I do Korra came up with the crazy idea. You're my older brother who was injured fighting a couple of benders, and I was blinded by a firebender and I live with you, and your fiancé who was orphaned because of one of the triad at a young age, Mako said as he saw a blush form on Korra's and Naruto's cheeks. But now let's go the sooner we get Bolin, the sooner I can get this makeup and these clothes off I'm burning up in these things, Naruto said as he had his hand on Mako's shoulder, while Korra held onto his left arm and her head on his shoulder, as they walked towards the building they were stopped by a large heviset man. Crossing his arms he said glaring at the three this is a private event and you're not getting in without an invitation. 
Invitation sweetie you have one don't you? Cora asked looking at her boyfriend who looked around in his pockets before Mako coughed making the three turn to the blind boy who was holding up the flyer. You told me to hold on to it remember? Mako said making the two teens sigh in relief. I forgot I said that bro thanks this is what you were talking about right? Naruto said taking the paper from his brother as the man nodded. That's it now tell me what are a couple of kids doing out here? The man asked making Naruto sigh in exasperation. Well we hate benders the whole lot of them. When my brother Rin and I were orphaned by a firebender who murdered our parents when we were six and blinded my brother while well, I got this scar over my eye. My girlfriend was also orphaned because benders killed her parents not too recently we want them gone just as much as anyone here, Naruto said with a glare which got sympathetic looks from the group behind them and the imposingly large man in front of them as he stepped aside. The revelation is upon us my brothers and sister he said with a smile which they returned as they walked inside maneuvering through the halls to see a large party of civilians standing on the ground floor across from a stage decorated with banners. I knew people hated benders, but this many is ridiculous, Naruto said hanging his head as he shook it lightly, while Korra tightened her grip. We have to keep our eyes out for Bull and he's around here somewhere, Mako said, getting a nod from the others, as the group of teens made their way to heart of the group. As soon as they reached the heart of the crowd from nowhere they heard as the center of the stage opened up with smoke rising please welcome your hero. Your savior. Amon. Rising from the floor were several equalists with a man wearing a detailed uniform with two rods on his back. The man standing in the front wore dark colors with a hood slightly shading a porcelain white mask with eye holes and a red sun on the forehead. As everyone saw him the crowd went wild before he raised his hand to silence them saying my quest for equality many years ago. When I was a boy my family and I lived on a small farm we weren't rich and none of us were benders. Listening to him speak Naruto heard Mako whisper dude knows how to entrance people doesn't he? Giving a faint nod Amon continued with us not being benders this made us easy targets for the firebender who extorted my father but one day my father confronted this man. But when he confronted the firebender that man took my family away from me and then he took my face. I had been forced to hide behind a mask ever since. Looking to Korra he could see the surprise look on her face as he continued, as you all know the Avatar has recently arrived in Republic City. At the mention of Korra the crowd began to hiss and boo at the mention of her as he said, and if she were here she'd tell you that bending brings balance to the world but she's wrong, as the only thing bending brought to the world is suffering. It has been the cause of every war, in every year. But that is about to change this I can assure you. I know you have been wondering what is the revelation. Well I can say you are about to get your answer. Since the beginning of time the spirits have acted as guardians of our world, and they have spoken to me. They say the Avatar has failed humanity, Amon said as Naruto winced feeling Korra tighten her grip on Naruto's arm, as her nails dug into his arm. That is why the spirits have chosen me to usher in a new era of balance. They have granted me a power a power that will make equality a reality, and that power is to take a person's bending away permanently he said, getting disbelieving looks from Naruto and Korra. That's impossible there's no way Korra said as Mako agreed with her, while Naruto stared straight ahead at the man in front of him, whose eyes connected with his for a brief moment, before he continued to look amongst the crowd. And now for a demonstration please welcome Lightning Bolt's old leader of the Triple Threat Triad, and one of the most notorious criminals in Republic City. The police have tried to capture him time and again, only for him to escape Amon said as a man wearing a grey suit with the top part being bright yellow with a lightning bolt diesel, as the crowd booed when more equalists brought him more of the triple threat triad, with Bolin making the three teens' eyes widen. As Kor was about to make a charge for him, Naruto gripped her shoulder making her turn before flinching at his eyes, seeing as they were bright red with slitted pupils as he said, we can't just charge in not with Amon and the guy with the sticks on his back. A couple of Kai blockers I could handle no problem, but with their leader and some second in command, I'm guessing we have to be tactical about this. Looking at him she said then I'm all for whatever plan you can come up with oh captain. Already got one just follow my lead both of you when I make a move do as I instruct Naruto said, making the two nod when they heard Amon speak. Zolt has amassed a fortune by extorting and abusing non-benders, but his reign of terror is about to come to an end. Amon said as the crowd cheered. Nodding to one of the equalists with him he said as the Kai blocker started to untie the ropes around Zolt's wrists, now in the interest of fairness, I will give Zolt the chance to fight to keep his bending. Confident Zolt shot several fireballs that Amon dodged effortlessly making his way to the firebender, when Zolt fired a bolt of lightning, which the masked group leader ducked grabbing the extended limb, as he manually aimed Zolt's wrist to the sky, as he grabbed the back of Zolt's neck, making him look up. Placing his thumb on the triple threat leader's forehead, he positioned his pointer finger to the man's temple, as everyone watched with rapt attention, awaiting to see what was to come, before the constant stream of lightning ebbed to a roar of fire, until it was snuffed out, making Amon let go of the gang leader who fell face first in a heap. 
Stepping back he allowed Zolt to stand before he punched forward hoping for a fireball, only to get nothing as he collapsed to the ground as Amon announced, your firebending is gone forever. The era of bending is over and a new era of equality has begun. The crowd cheered as they grabbed the man who Bolin left with kicking him forward as Naruto said, now you all remember the plan. Betting a nod Mako said yeah those machines are powered by water and steam, well you and Korra distract them with the steam I'll grab Bolin, and we duck out of here. Nodding in satisfaction Naruto grabbed Korra by her wrist as he gently guided her through the crowd before they entered a hallway filled with pipes and valves, which the two twisted making steam spew from the sides of the pipes. Hey what are you two doing here? They heard a familiar voice say making them turn to see the man who stood out front approaching them. Is there a problem my brother? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. What are you two doing here? This place is restricted the large man said, making Naruto give an embers chuckle as he scratched the back of his head. Well you see my brother really had to go the bathroom I tried to tell him to hold it, but he had to have had six cups of tea earlier before we left, I guess now he'll listen to me from now on, Naruto said with an embers chuckle, making the man stare at him before looking to the steam. And the pipes. He asked making the two look as Korra stepped forward. When we came over here my boyfriend saw they were smoking, so he was trying to cut off the flow and prevent a problem that's the kind of man he is always so helpful she said, patting his cheek with a loving smile. I see but why exactly is he the man started before Naruto sighed in exasperation as he deliver a quick jab to the side of his neck, knocking him unconscious, falling to a heap. He asks too many questions now come on we need to hurry, Naruto said getting a nod from Korra as they proceeded to twist the valves, making more small streams of steam to pour out, before Naruto groaned in annoyance before he did a spin kick, hitting a pair of pipes with his metal shoes, making the tops of the pipes come off as the room began to fill with it. I think this should be enough Korra said getting a nod from Naruto as the two began to bend the steam out of the hall and into the room. With Mako. How on Naruto, Korra they're getting there about to do bowl in Mako thought as he squeezed between people as he started to reach the front when the machines Naruto pointed out exploded making the room fill with steam and the screams of the people inside, allowing Mako to run through tossing an equalist who was restraining Mako off him and off the stage. You alright? Mako asked getting a hug from his brother as they ran out a nearby door and down the ladder when Mako saw a shadow above him as he saw the man with the sticks as he stabbed them into the ladder, causing a surge of electricity to course through them, making them let go as they fell. Jumping off the attacker attempted to slam the sticks into the ground, making a surge of electricity to fly around him only for Mako and Bolin to dodge it at the last second, before Mako shot a ball of fire at the man which he dodged taking a few swings with his sticks, as he swept Mako's feet from under him and slammed his other stick into the firebender's chest. Seeing what happened to his brother Bolin sent large chunks of earth at the attacker, which were avoided effortlessly with flips and cartwheels, before the grown man charged forward much to Bolin's terror. In an attempt to avoid the man Bolin created an earth well which the man jumped over delivering quick blows with the sticks before jabbing Bolin, with both keeping them on him, as the earthbender spasmed before falling to the ground, as Mako slid along the side of the wall as he spun, creating an arc of fire which the attacker dodged, before getting into a close range fight before his stun batons. Slammed into Mako's chest making him yell in pain before he fell to the ground. You benders need to understand that there's no place in the world for the likes of you anymore, he said before a slanted pillar of earth slammed into his chest, making him fly into the wall as Naruto and Korra came from around the corner. You know after kidnapping our friend we imagined we could just walk away from this and share a long healthy chuckle after this was over but attacking our friends. Oh see now we have a bit of a problem, Naruto said shedding his disguise along with Korra, calling Naga as Naruto picked up Bolin, while she picked up Mako as they jumped on the polar bear dog. Are they following us? Korra asked making Naruto turn to see nothing as he held on tight to Korra's midsection, drawing a blush from the dark-skinned water tribe girl, feeling him holding on to her. Nothing's following us thank the spirits for that come on we can take them to the temple Naruto said, getting a nod from the dark-haired teen, as they rode in silence. You do know we'll be chewed out by mom and Tenzin for being out for two whole nights and a whole day. Naruto said getting a groan from the avatar. Don't remind me she said as they rode in silence. Air Temple Island. What do you mean you still haven't found them? Tenzin and Lin exclaimed at the White Lotus members before they heard a cough from behind them, making them turn to see Naruto and Korra with deep rings under their eyes, leaning against each other to keep the other upright. At the look on the two benders any form of anger they had was replaced with worry, seeing the disheveled look the two held as Korra had bruises along her body, while Naruto was covered in some as well after he removed his armor. What happened to you two? Are you alright? Tenzin asked as the two teens shook their heads allowing the two White Lotus members that were being chewed out by the two adults to run, while Naruto and Korra fell to the ground in exhaustion. 
well during practice Cora and her team was told they needed 30,000 yuan to enter the tournament, and they were short, so they were looking for a way to make money skip to the drama bowl and ended up going with Shady Shin he said, making Lin look at him. Of the triad she exclaimed getting a positive from him as he continued his tail drawing worried looks from the two as he told them of Bolin being kidnapped by the equalists and them looking around the city, trying to find Bolin all night before coming across the first ever lead they got related to Amon. So those protesters hold information that can lead to them. Tenzin said getting a positive from the others before they were then consumed with worry when they were told how many anti-benders attended the revelation before the story reached its climax. The place was filled with Kai blockers, and worse of all Amon was there, and he can take away a person's bending away for good, Cora said, making the two grown adults look at the two in surprise before Lin bust out into a laugh. But one avatar, but only avatar on could do that along with you she said, before stopping seeing the two teens with a grave expression on their faces. You're serious aren't you? She asked getting a nod from the two. We saw him take away Zolt's bending with our own eyes, along with the rest of the triple threats we barely escaped with Bolin it's dangerous trying to storm a place like that without extensive planning, and it might not be possible because of the stunt we pulled, he might have come up with a different means of protection as, much as I hate to say this, but Amon isn't some run-of-the-mill thugger gang. Leader. He has a cult willing to go at any means to do as he said, and they will follow through with whatever he says Naruto said, scratching his head in exasperation. But the man he isn't going to stop until every bender be it man, woman or small child, has their bending stripped from them as long as Amon is out there no bender is safe, Tenzin said, as the others nodded before hearing a groan come from Naruto, as he clutched his side, making his mother go into protective mother mode, as she lifted her son's white shirt up slightly, to see his toned stomach was covered. And bruises. What happened in there son? She asked getting a groan as he tried to stand to his feet. Well with the lack of proper sleep for nearly two whole days and only a couple bowls of Raymond from Ichirakus, I wasn't exactly mentally prepared to fight, Naruto said as he was about to fall again before Korra met his other side. Kneeling down Tenzin took a tentative touch to the young boy's chest, making him wince in pain as he said, it seems Amon's equalists cracked a few ribs if Kaya were here, she'd be able to help heal them, but for now your natural healing is going to have to go into overdrive. Go to sleep and get some rest Lin do you think you can bandage Korra and Naruto up? Nodding she led the two teens to their rooms, she bandaged her son and said son you really got to be more careful. Wincing as she finished trapping up her son's chest as he said don't worry mom I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Besides I'm a bayfrong I'm made of tougher stuff and it would take more to do me in than a simple set of cracked ribs. I know it's just first I lost your father and you're all I got left I don't know what I'd do if I lost you she said getting a chuckle from him. Well good thing we'll never have to find out huh mom? I mean really who else would cook your favorite ramen if I wasn't around? I mean yeah Ichirakus makes the best ramen in Republic City, but they can't recreate the flavors you like Naruto said, yawning as she chuckled seeing her son rub his eyes like when he was a child. At some sleep son she said getting a nod from her son, as he yawned lying back as she kissed his forehead before walking out of his room, making her way to Korra's room, as she saw the avatar finish up her wrappings. Oh hey Lin how's Naruto? Korra asked getting a sigh from the mother as she leaned against the doorway. He's fine one thing I've learned about my son is that he's a workhorse, and despite being only human, he spreads himself too far out. It's one of his most admirable yet troublesome traits. He could go days possibly weeks without sleep because he has obligations, and he'd feel that whatever is currently happening holds greater importance than his own safety she said chuckling. One time he helped a few people out of a burning building as they escaped, but he broke his leg in the process leaving him bedridden for a while. What I want to say is I'm happy you had Naruto's back he's a good guy and he needs people to look out for him. At first when I looked at you I thought you were a troublemaker, but now I know Naruto couldn't be in safer hands she said hugging Korra before pulling back. Thank you Korra and get some sleep Lin said closing Korra's door, leaving a shell-shocked avatar in her bed. Now I know I'm hurt because Lin usually gives me the stink eye the avatar thought before falling back into her bed as the events of the last two days crashed down on her forcing her to fall asleep. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.